Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Data here, and welcome back to our live franchise mode series on NHL 24 with the San Francisco Starfleet. Episode number 21, moving into the 2029 draft and off season. In the last one, year number six came to an end. It was an early exit. We'll recap all that in a few minutes. If you're joining us after we've already gone live, you can go ahead and hop to the five minute mark in the video, and that's when we'll get started once we've welcomed everyone in. Here is the playoff tree from last episode. Gen Z, welcome to the stream, my friend. We'll break down what we're doing in a little bit as you can see title of this episode making cuts there will be cuts to be made if you're watching after you've already gone live you can see the uh, thumbnail of this one uh, i was trying to think what could i do to 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 show the idea of cutting something what gets cut into right a cake is there any cake in star trek well actually there is so if you're watching right now live and you want to refresh and check that out, if you if you know, you know from the episode of uh, Next Gen when uh, uh, Counselor Troy is a uh, piece of cake. There you go. <laughs> Dice, Myla, Nathan, welcome to the stream, everybody. Thanks for hopping in. Great to have you here. We'll get started on the five minute mark if you're just join if you're joining us after you've already gone live. But if you're joining us live, then we will just start doing all the little things I got to do. Before we can get started, all the little uh, dotting of the I's and crossing of the T's. Double data today, as Hobby said in the Discord server. Double data as we had Canucks upload uh, eight hours ago, our 2030 postseason. And oh, now in Starfleet, we have our 2029 off season, eight hours later. Captain on the bridge, yes, sir. Mylek cut the watching of the Vancouver episode short, no problem. Dexter, I haven't watched the season yet. Well, you know what? I always get, I always do my best to give a recap of what's happened so far. But if you want to always, uh, if you want to exit out and check it out um, and then come back to this one, that is perfectly fine to do as well. This postseason was the really disappointing one, right? Yes, I would say so, Myla. I would say so. President's Trophy winners, the one seed losing against the 16 seed, I would say was quite a disappointing one, yes. <laughs> But hey, we're going to build from it. We're going to make some cuts. We're going to cut away some of the excess on this team. Hey, here's Landon. CCSSWW, baby. I have a, yeah, same thing, Dexter. I can always... I give, the, I give the little recap. You can always exit out and come back later or another time. But if you're, uh, if you're interested in helping with the off-season thoughts, then you are welcome to stay as well. I know some people want to only watch when they're fully up to date. Some people don't mind jump, jumping around to different episodes. Totally up to you. Making cuts. 2029 drafts and off season. All right. Perfect. More the merrier. We're happy to have you in here, Dexter. I, for one, am. Okay. Drop players for draft picks and get those late rounders. Well, yeah, we'll, I will recap who some of the value picks may be in this draft. Let me just send out the tweet, and that'll be the last little thing to do. Yeah, and I'm ready to go. Hey, I made good time this time. Sometimes it takes me a long time to get going. How, uh... I still have, like, a couple minutes left here. Hey, finally, it makes me good time. I make my way all through... All... Yes, I know you do like to do that, um, Dexter. And Joe starts it off with the donut before we even get started. Joe, enjoyed the Canucks episode data. Looking forward to the draft. Mighty Joe with the mighty 699. Big love to you, Joe. Joe is just an absolute unit out there donating contributing in our fantasy leagues doing the the historian work this man is an absolute unit there's no way else to say it no other way to say it just a unit of an individual joe we appreciate you we love you and we thank you another entry added for joe the donations that you make whether it be on the channel live or otherwise or to the paypal link in the description every donation uh, 9.99 and under gives you one entry into the contest for a created player. By whenever our next series starts, that'll be, or maybe even some of our drafted players in the MLB franchise. But it, it's not a big rush on it. But you will have a created player named after you if your name is pulled of, let's say, the five players that we pull from the raffle, three players, whatever it would be. And the more you donate, ten dollars and up, I believe is we said two uh, entries. Uh, was it twenty and up? Was five entries? Something like that. And if you do it through the PayPal link, your entry number is doubled. So whether you're watching live or after the fact, you can use that if you want to get entries into the raffle to have a created player in a franchise mode series of your choosing. If you really want MLB, you can be MLB. If you really want NHL, you can wait for NHL. Um, perfect. Good. So I won't recap things just yet, but as you can see by the playoff tree, there was some disappointment last episode, right? 
Let me just pull up the comments from the last one. Then we'll be good to go in just a moment. No problem. It's up to you. And Joe, you, you can pretty much say that you're looking forward to it with the amount of entries, right? Chris, welcome to the stream. Uh, let me get this ready. Yeah, we could do goalie, no problem. You could do goalie. Okay, that brings us to the five minute mark. Yeah, we're a little past it even. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the San Francisco Starfleet uh, Live Franchise Mode Series on uh, NHL 24, episode number 26. Uh, you know what? The title of the episode got cut off, eh? I just realized that. I said I had done everything quickly, I jinxed myself. Mode number 21. It got cut off a little bit, eh? My apologies. Now is it? Franchise mode number 21. There you go. <sighs> Embarrassing. And then Dexter comes in with a 10 to start it off. Woohoo! Just one cent of bubble gets you two entries. Dexter with the beauty dono, as Joe says. Beautiful. Dexter, that gives you two more. Thank you, my friend. Dexter, I'll have I'll throw in a few extra for Dexter, even who's given donations in the past. Thank you, Dexter. That's two entries added for you. Appreciate you, buddy. That goes a long way. It really, really does. Thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to not having to raise as much when it comes to our next purchases with the excess that we'll hopefully be making in the near future. Now that I think MLB is very close to being paid off, if not fully paid off. But I digress. Sorry to uh, deviate there. And Mila with the dollar just to throw. Hey, the third donation before we even get started. Mila with another one. Beautiful. It has been noted. Mila, thank you for the dollar. Whether it be one cent or 1,000, it is just the you going through the effort to do it and you your heart being in that place to want to give to the community so that it can go back into the more content in the channel it means a lot. You've had already three, yeah, Hobbsy, you're sleeping, buddy. All right, whew, let's get into it. Let's do it for Myla, Dexter, and Joe. In the last one, we had, we were entering the postseason as the number one seed. We had won our first franchise, our first French, our first President's Trophy in our franchise's history. We had a 55, 20, and 7 record. We had, you know, the division title, the conference title, the President's Trophy, of course. We were looking for, um, to, you know, we are looking to say we are going to continue our pace of these Stanley Cup final appearances, but we faced the wild card 16 seed Blues in round number one. I believe we were up 2 1 in the series, if I'm not mistaken, and we lost three in a row, I think, to go down 6 2, uh, to lose the series 4 2, and ultimately lose in six games. Yeah, we'll be making some changes on defense, absolutely. Was it? Yeah, we had one games 1 and 2. Yeah, there you go. Now it's all coming back to me. We won 9 2 and 2 0. Then 5 2 loss, 8 2 loss, 5 3 loss, 4 2 loss. Yep. All coming back to me now, like a bad dream. So yeah, that being said, we did see some some good performances. It wasn't all negatives. Artemi Panarin had seven points. Same for Cole Perfetti. McIntyre, five goals, six points. Fabian Lysel, point per game. Uh, the captain, Lindholm, had six. Fiala, five. Hudson, four. Started to fall off after that. Malkin was a disappointment. Needed some goals from him. Um... Gouli have no points, negative five in six games. The writing's on the wall for him as well. And the goaltending in the end, Mikola, he just, he didn't cut it. Two and two, 877 save percentage. And who did we have to go to in the back up there? Uh, nah. It was, and Greaves, that's who it was, Greaves. Greaves had good numbers in the end. Greaves, back-to-back postseasons of decent numbers. Jet Greaves ended up taking over for at least a couple games, right? What were his numbers again? Because Kosa's gone. Where is he? Greaves. Come on, give me those numbers, Greaves. Jeff Greaves was 0-3, but 892 save percentage. And he wasn't that great. With the amount of joy I have from this channel, it's way Dexter, warming my heart, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say Gulia's probably 100% out. I still believe in Nicolas, says Andrew. Rookies with low poise don't perform well in the playoffs. I agree. I don't have any long-term issues with Nicola. So yeah, there's. it wasn't much of a recap from last episode. We lost in round number one. It was very sad. It was a heartbreaking one. We've had, you know, after we had been to three, was it? Yeah, three consecutive Stanley Cup final appearances. Doing so each time as, you know, an unimpressive type of team. We had one wild card win that brought us to Stanley Cup final. We had three seasons of 48 wins or below, right? Yeah. And then this year we win 55, new franchise record, President's Trophy, and we have bounced right away. The Blues went on, and not only did we lose, we were the ultimate losers. We lost to the Blues, who lost to the Oilers, who lost to the Devils, who lost to the Avalanche. So we were the ultimate losers of the postseason. 
But in the season itself, we saw such crazy performances. Perfetti, 108 points. Panarin, 101. McIntyre, 51 goals, 94 points. Fiala, 90. Lindholm, 88. Fabian Lysel, now up to an 85. We'll see if he sticks. 75-point season. You know, uh, Mylat left a good comment. Data and his 83 overall players scoring 70-plus points. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Lysel, Lekaramaki, um, Lundqvist, Tippett, players who were in like the mid to low 80s scoring um, in the, like that 70 point range. Uh, Otto Stenberg had a good season. Rubrik, we want him to really grow, so we can't leave him in the bottom six or the middle six. I think he's got to play probably, t well, top six would be okay, but definitely first or second line next season. Axel Sandin Palika, he's definitely a name that we were thinking about moving just because of the nationalities, unfortunately. I am I was very happy with Axel Sandin Palika's regular season. 33 points, he was a plus 16 in the postseason. I'd looked, yeah, I would consider that, Red Boy. You're exactly right. Thanks for the first comment of the, of the, the last, the entire 21 episodes, the first episode, the first comment is that. Very nice. Plus 16 from, from Palika. I enjoyed what he did in the regular season, but in the postseason, five games, no points, negative four, and he was still playing big minutes. 15.05, well, big minutes for him. A little bit less, 15, I'm not, no, he wasn't playing 11 minutes. Still 15 plus minutes per night, no points from him. Meanwhile, in the regular season, playing 17 plus, he had 33. So that's the thing. I've been wondering, do I want to keep him? Yes, but his nationality as a Swede is not helpful as we have Ludwig Eriksson, who we had just drafted with the second overall pick last year. We have him coming in as a Swede, and if you didn't already know, the, um, the confines of this series is you can't have more than one nationality on a line or defensive pairing. So if Axel Sandin Plika stays, that means Eriksson or Sandin Plika can't play third pair. One of those two would be playing second pair. And I wouldn't want either of them there just yet, unless we have good growth. Ludwig Eriksson, he's an 80 overall. We drafted him as a 79. Defensive defenseman, we got him out of the SHL, correct? Yeah, no, sorry, Liga. 14 points plus 36 this past season, so he'll make his NHL debut next season. But maybe he's good enough by then to be playing second pair? It's a tough question. So I wouldn't say I'm in a big hurry to trade Axel Sandin Palika, but it could be that he's out just because of the um, restraints on the series. He signed on for one, two, two more years at 2.575. So next year, if the top pair is Hudson and, uh, we'll get to that in a moment, maybe a Moritz Sider? The second pair would be Romanov and Ramirez, but if Ericsson were to grow enough, maybe it would be um, Ramirez and and Ericsson, and then the third pair is Romanov and Palika. We've had a lot of American... Yeah, we have. We have Hudson, uh, Ramirez, Pesci. We've had a bunch throughout. So, that being said, that's just a quick little recap on where we are as a franchise. Before we get started on the off-season, let's quickly go to the comments and see what was said in the last one from the AGMs. Um, Dan loving the auto scout that was set until August of 2030. So hats off as always to EA and the auto scouting system. <laughs> uh, Dice left some good perspective. Um, my I'd say Romanov works for what he is. It's 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 more Guliev who's who's out, but Romanov in a third pair role even. I think he's been steady. But anything can happen. So Dice in the last one saying, just for some perspective, since their inception through six seasons, Starfleet, San Francisco Starfleet have been to 50% of the Stanley Cup Finals. Their regular season record has improved in five out of six seasons. They've captured at least one award in four out of six seasons. And this team has quickly become successful. And there's no reason to think that it will end. Go Fleet. Good to put it in perspective. May I know, Romanov brings grit. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to think of it from all the different perspectives. Cheating Heels comment says, Well, as we've mentioned, this was a bummer of a playoff after such an awesome regular season. We can't win them all, but getting kicked out in such a fashion after a dominant season is such a letdown. And letdowns also mean incoming changes. First off, I think Lysel isn't ready. Uh, this... <laughs> JP, Guliev went this far, but no further. I can't wait to use that for a thumbnail someday. That was a, such a great model for our cup run. <laughs> Cheating Hill continuing. First off, I think Lysel isn't ready for a first line promotion, so he should remain on line two. I agree. But I also think we need to promote Rubric. But he isn't ready for first line minutes, so he's also slated for the second line. This causes a problem, as neither Perfetti or Lindholm can be on line two if this is the case. So, do we go with McIntyre as second line center? Perfetti and McIntyre look like they have better production when they are apart, so maybe that's not a bad idea to split them up. 
Now this opens a door to either keeping Lindholm playing on the wing with Perfetti, or do we look into trading him? He's going to be 35. It could be a good way to capitalize on his value before it goes down, just like we did with Tyler Toffoli. And he might net us a pick high enough to get a rare nationality from the top eight if a team wants to trade their pick. I'm good either way, but this might be my preferred option. It would also allow us to give the leadership of the team to our younger core. Yeah, I feel you, Cam. 2023 Bruins impression. So, uh, still continuing on in the comment, just a quick commentary on my side of things. Moving on from Lindholm makes a lot of sense for those reasons, but at the same time, he definitely has a full no-movement clause for that contract he signed when he stuck to be here in, on the expansion Starfleet squad. I don't know if he's going to want to waive it to move as its captain after a President's Trophy winning season and three consecutive Stanley Cup finals. I don't know if he's going to want to waive that no-movement clause. It would make sense to capitalize on his value like to Foley, but those were two different situations situation so it would have to be the right storyline as much as I agree that it would be a good idea it would be tough to get the storyline to wrap around it I think so continuing with cheating heel our offense could look like Fiala Perfetti Lindholm or maybe if it's in Kucherov who knows what or then Rubric grows a lot of different ideas then the second line Lysel McIntyre Rubric I like that third line would be Panarin Stenberg and Hellenius then the fourth line would be Emelin Beck and Cunnan so on defense, as mentioned, Guliev needs to go. Fingers crossed that either Fox or Cider drops a free agency or that we trade for their rights to the draft to ensure that we get one of them. Cider is probably the better choice as Fox can't play with Hudson or Ramirez, so it would complicate things. Yeah, well said. The only other interesting option at right D would be Liljegren, but then we'd have three Swedes. We have enough Swedes in Vancouver, so again, not ideal. We probably really need to make a push to get Cider's rights at the draft. So then the deep pairings could be Hudson Cider, Ramirez Sandin Palika, and Eriksson Roman. Of. What are the physical stats of our roster? I don't remember, but I don't think we have good physical forwards. And if Romanov is the only guy bringing any stuff, maybe we're getting pushed around. Maybe. Maybe. I think we have some size in the lineup. And I'll look at our picks in a second, Joe. Just to finish off cheating heel, at the draft, if we trade Lindholm for a top pick and we are able to keep our first pick, then we could uh, then we can also even think about trading Kosa, Guliev, and we can look at even moving our stagnating prospects. That's where I said ma making cuts. Like Haikila, Haltonen, Knights, Lucic, Mugli, you know, guys like that, we can think about making cuts here to get value back now. Doing that would get us a couple of good rated players uh, in return. Um, and targets the draft, some names Halpern, Farrell, Nabokov. I'll go ahead and pin those. Um, a lot of interesting options. Can't wait to see which way you'll decide to go. Go Fleet. I don't know if I'd say we're looking at draft day splashes, and thank you for those thoughts, Cheating Heel. I wouldn't, I don't know about that. We have a first at 29th overall because we won the President's Trophy, even though we got bounced in the first round. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about the draft splashes. So I don't know if we're thinking about any draft splashes. First round pick at 29, we have two seconds, two thirds, and a sixth. So we still have some draft capital. Package that up with a Kosa, with a Guliev, whatever else. We can definitely be trading up. But a first, two seconds, two thirds, five picks in the first three rounds, I'm definitely content with that. So that those are where our picks are, Joe. Uh, Myla asked how our physicality looks when it comes to our lineup. So if you're just looking at size quickly, if I'm just scrolling through the size, 5'11", 5'10", 5'10", 6'1", 6'1", 6'5", 6'11", 6'1", 6'3", 6'2", 5'11", 5'10", 6'3", he's gone. If I had to say I have 6'4", Beck 6'0", Helene is 5'11", so like the average height is like 6'0". Um, what do our future picks look like? If I go to the trade block, I should be able to see that. Our future picks. Future picks. Uh, can I sort by year? Thank you. So in 2030, it looks a bit wonky, but in 2030, we have a first, a second, a third, a fourth. Okay, so we have no sixth, no seventh, but all picks from rounds one to five in 2030. Yeah, Mo Sider would definitely help with that. Uh, last one coming in from Dice in the Discord server. Let me just pull that one up quickly. Dice, thank you. Uh, the thoughts that Dice leaves, it's actually like, like there's people who leave the books and that's great. There's the people who leave just a couple sentences and that's great. But what Dice does, which is unique, is he leaves the, the advanced analytics. He sent us the, the sum of plus minus per game played. All the stats last three years. It is ridiculous. The amount of, um... Just not just the effort, but the amount of mind, brain power that goes into it. So thank you so much for that. Special report from Section 31. Thank you for it again. The summarization of Dice's thoughts were, in his own words, Out, Guliev, Axel Sandin Plika, Johansson, Hellenius, Kosa, In, Cider, 
Kucherov, Kubalik. With draft targets being Nabokov, Huberdo, uh, Yelonen, and I'd like more info on Patterson, Farrell, and Rupp. So if I just want to do that for dice right now, we already said we think about Nabokov, Huberdo, Ilonen, Patterson, Farrell, and Rupp. I don't remember what those positions were, or where those were like where they are. So I have to go through it kind of quick, uh, kind of slowly actually. So those Nabokov, like we had said, I'll go ahead and just um, give him a pin. Uh, Huberdo, sixty-one. Yes, we said, but we want to look at Patterson, Farrell, Rupp. Patterson, Farrell, Rupp. I passed her up already. Great. Hold on. Here's Patterson. Jaden Patterson. Three years away. We don't know enough about him, really, unfortunately, on Jaden Patterson, but the nationality is very helpful. I already passed her up. What's wrong with me? Uh, Rupp. Here he is. The Romanian. Dylan Rupp. Six foot five, right D. B's across for everything. Three years away at 18 years of age. He would be an average prospect. Medium top four D with like 65 overall out of the draft. Looks mid, could be something. It would be more of a nationality play than anything. And then, last one was Patterson. Yeah, no, Farrell, Farrell, we saw Patterson. Or is it Patterson? No, yeah, Patterson we saw. Let me guess, I already passed him, right? Farrell. Yeah, I definitely already passed him. Let me guess, he was a top five guy and I just went straight through. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we go back to the top. Back to the top. They were higher notes. No problem, no problem. Ah, he was right here, eh? What Dice has been doing is phenomenal work, especially picking up my slack on the sheet. Yeah, the, 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 historian, the historians who are contributing to the sheet is incredible. Thank you to everyone who's putting in the work for that. So Julian Farrell, A minus shooting, power forward, seventeen, probably a four star shooting guy. Milan Lucic, similarity, three years away, has great size. Poland definitely provides the nationality, but it would provide it would require a lot of trade value to be moved around. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to hop into the draft. We know that Kosa's out. I would say Guliev's out as well. If we want to just make sure, hey, I didn't want to go to the message message center. If we just want to look at where the team is in terms of uh, positions, positionally. Positionally, forwards. So, Fiala, at this moment, Perfetti, Fiala, Lindholm, McIntyre, Lysel, Rubric would ideally be the top six. Panarin's going to drop off a little bit. He'll still get, still get power play one, but he'll probably play third line with Stenberg and fill in the blanks. I'm not sure about Hellenius. Then the fourth line can be Beck, Afanasev, uh, in the system, maybe Haikila, Emelin, guys like that. So I'd say maybe a third liner, but nothing really needed for the forwards. Gen Z, if we're staying at 29, we should pick Nabokov because he has the closest ETA in comparison. Yes, I, I, I agree with that, Gen Z. And Estonian as well, which helps the nationalities. And on defense, Hudson on the first pair, fingers crossed with Maurice Sider. Second pair could be something along the lines of Romanov and Ramirez. And then the third pair could be, in theory, um, Pelika and Ericsson for now. But, of course, that's only in theory because, in reality, it cannot be. So something would have to change there. Either Sandin Pelika plays second pair and Romanov comes down. Uh, Ramirez has been an 85 before, hasn't he? Why is he an 83? Or maybe Ericsson grows enough to move up. So that being said, I don't want to move Pelika now, but we might move him before the season starts. But I want to wait, because if Ericsson has a jump to like 83 or whatever, he can play second pair. If he's still an 80, and he's on the third pair, that changes things. But Guliev's definitely on his way out. He's down to an 81 now even. For his production, you would think that he should have had more growth. But number one target for the draft will be to look at getting the rights to Moritz Seider, bringing in that German power. Uh, not uh, No Germans on the team anymore without Nico Sturm. Any picks that want to be moved here for any of the team's... At the top, no way. Eh? So it'd be hard to move into the top eight. No pick until number 13 with our rivals, the Islanders. No picks until 13 on the block. So if we just quickly... So before we even look at the trade blocks, we know that we want to look at acquiring the rights to Maurice Sider. So I don't want to do any looking just yet. I want to make the first trade. They're up against the cap. That's why. They're right up against the cap. They need to move out some money. That's, they got to pay Lucas Raymond's extension. They got to pay Kivi Haru. They got to pay this guy Riley. They got to pay Baudin. So I see why I see the issue for Detroit. So defense here. If I look at Moritz, the trade value is not too high on Mo Sider. How is he simulated? 
Maurice Tsai, he's going to want big money. So if we acquire him, we have to commit to paying him big money, not a $7 million discount. 88 overall with the five-star defense, big six foot four with the X-Factors, German nationality. Only 24 points this past year. He's not a big points simulation guy, but he eats a lot of minutes. He hits, he blocks, he does so much so well. We definitely want to go out and look at getting Moritz Sider. The Red Wings are buyers and they need to buy at it. Like I can't give you Guliev. He's going to be eating up your cap space. You can't afford it. But if I can give you a guy like Mugli, if we're cutting him off, I don't know, maybe a guy like that. Before I do it though, let's look first at uh, the entire team. Terrible. It was really terrible on the Wings production wise. Trade him in my Pens franchise. Hit 55 plus. That's exactly it. With our Flyers series, Cider was incredible on NHL 22, right? Cider has had a good history with us. Um, that's true. Guliev would be a $3 million discount, but he is the perfect fit for Cole Hudson as well. They could be a, they could, that could be the pairing for the next decade plus. So if I want to look at a cheap option for Detroit to take on, it would be either a prospect. Probably not. Probably be a guy like Moogly would go in a part of it. Maybe even the Hellenius, actually. What do they need? Forwards or defense? Hellenius could be a straight-up swap, actually. What do they need? Forwards or defense? If I look at guys who are signed on, one, two, three. Uh, I don't know if they want picks, but let's see what they need organizationally first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Uh, it would be tough for Hellenius to make the team, probably. On defense, though, one, two, three, four, five, six, with Casey Pesci expiring. Yeah, I can see them wanting Moogly more than Hellenius then. So if I say I'll offer you Moogly, even Johansson, I can give you a couple defensemen here. Two defensemen right here would be pretty valuable for Detroit. I think this would be a good swap. I'll give you a two, one prospect and one young-ish? You know, a depth defenseman and a prospect defenseman who played third pair this whole first, uh, past third year. Or maybe we take back a wing. That's interesting, Cheating Hill. We could take back a wing. Let's let the Predators make their pick here. They take Roberts, immediately playmaker, 83 overall. So if we're going to look at... Maybe we take back a wing and we do give him Hellenius. Let's see. Forwards. Do they have anyone making crazy money here? Those guys we just saw? Any older guys making big money? Hey, where's the age? I'm looking the wrong way. Uh, not so much. Maybe Lekanen? But he has a lot of value. Barbashev? Well, look at Barbashev. I'm saying for Detroit first. Um, maybe Bergren's making too much money, but he's expiring, so it's not a big deal. I'm saying for guys who are signed on next year, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Riley's going to be signed. He's an RFA, so 9. That's already their top 9 filled, and all these guys have too much trade value, so no, I don't think it would make sense. Into third pair. No. Yeah, he'd play third. And maybe, yeah, actually, Johansson maybe would be third pair right away. Yannick's nationality. Jan Yannick, isn't he Czech? Uh, yes, there you go. So I do think defense would make more sense for them. So if I give you a th two third pair defensemen, essentially, for, for cheap, cheap. Mowgli and Johansson, two guys who we're not going to be bringing back or just don't have use for. Mowgli, who's one of our first draft picks. Our, our first draft picks weren't um, get Cole Caulfield. Unfortunately, I don't think the Canadians would want to move him right now, Beast. Thanks for the suggestion, though. Yan Yannick would be a unique uh, nationality. Maybe we take him back if we're giving him a lot of value. So we, lo we love Mowgli. We drafted him in the second round, 35th overall in 2024. His growth has been slow. We gave him a full season. He looked okay. 14 points and a plus 8 in his rookie season, playing almost 15 minutes a night. But I think it'll be okay. With the defense we have in our system, I wouldn't mind bringing back Cider. Uh, now I'm making that, that uh, improvement there. Do we want to take back Yan Yannick? He's expiring, right? Uh, he would be good depth. He would, yeah, why, why not? For depth, why not? So we'll take back Cider and Yannick. Yannick is a check who would give us good flexibility for the uh, nationalities. Two-way forward. Last year, I only played 25 games. We'll give him a chance to play. He was great in AHL the year before. So we'll let him play. Third round pick in 2018. Can we take back even something a little bit? I don't want to cheese it bad, but if you want to move a, a, a seventh, you have two sevens. I'll take one of your sevens if you want. What do you say to this, Detroit? No, too far off. Straight up for this one. All right, trade accepted. Thank you, Detroit. Leon, Simon, good luck in Detroit. Another Swede going to the Red Wings. That's great. But Moritz Sider, it's not done yet. It's not official yet. But Moritz Sider could be the missing piece that we're looking for on that right side ever since we moved on from Brett Pesci. But even then, he was a bit of a placeholder. He could be that right defenseman that we've been waiting for this entire series. So that gives Detroit some flexibility. And they're, I think they're happy to make that deal. As upset as they are to lose Sider... 
in this world, he's not the cider of the real world. I don't think they mind, as much as he does well, I don't think they mind losing 25 points and 100 blocks and 100 hits. That's Yeah, that definitely hurts. I don't think they mind so much when they're going to get a lot of clap, cap flexibility and not lose him for nothing, right? Um, maybe, you have the, maybe you will have the value to try on the power forward. Which one are you talking about there, Cam? Bing, bang, bong, Moogly is gone, Moritz is here, yes. Uh, er oh, yikes, Erickson goes second overall. I haven't seen a 74 overall go so low in a long time. 74 overall goes second. And this guy, NHL ready, NHL ready. Oof, these next two guys are going to be like 80 overall. Sheesh. So that's a tough pick for the Canadians. Maybe that's what they needed organizationally, but... All right, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the trade blocks. Farrell's the power forward? Gotcha. Uh, we'll look at the trade blocks around the league now. The Lucic comp? Gotcha. Yeah, Farrell. Perfect. Thanks for the reminder. Uh, okay, sorting by overall to the trade blocks quickly here. I don't want to take too much time, but Novak on the block in um, in Anaheim. Uh, sorting by overall. Or should I, uh, maybe sort by trade value. Coyotes, Bruins. If anyone catches your eye, let me know. Bruins, Sabres, Flames, Pierre Dubois, three years left though. Hubert Do, three years left. Dubé, yeah, it's not happening. Strom, Canadian though. Hurdle, what's Hurdle's nationality again? Uh, Czech. Uh, we want Moogly to work as a Swiss. Thank you for, yeah, that's it. We want him to work as a Swiss. We bring in a German instead. So there you go. Tomas Hurdle, one year left on him after this season, but that would be a lot of money. I don't know where he'd fit anyways. It's more of, it's more looking at prospects. I like swapping young pieces for young pieces. Is more about what I'd be interested in. For Hagee, Reinhardt. Any decent-ish prospects out there. That's kind of what I'm thinking more. Chef Jeff, here he is. We've been talking about Chef Jeff for a long time. Has he played a postseason game yet in his career? He has with Buffalo here in this in this uh, altered reality. Never made it out of the first round. Maybe we think about Chef Jeff in free agency. Detroit. They still have some young pieces on the block, but I just made a deal with them. So I don't know if we want to make trade more. Uh, Valeno, Montour, Forsling, Bean, Roy, they'd all be on expiring deals next season. LA, Minnesota, Kozevnikov, Centerman. Yeah, I know. Carter and Sam can't escape the block in any franchise mode, it seems like. Timofey Kozevnikov. Bathgate, who's this guy? Solomon Bathgate, what a name. Power forward. Uh, Canadians. Oof. Doc is on the block. Zetterlund. Uh, Busenius, 76-20, Jason Busenius, ninth overall pick by the Devils, 86 points in the, uh, WHL. Okay. Like, would, would they want, like, would they want Hellenius type of deal, right? This is the type of deal that I'd be looking at. Um, like a Hellenius for, like a, one prospect for another, pretty much. Hellenius for Busenius. Uh, Emerton goes third overall to the Jets. Uh, where were we? Devils, Devils, Islanders, Ennius for Ennius, right? <laughs> uh, Sador, what's his nationality? He was Canadian, I saw, he was Canadian. Rangers, Sadikov, Senators, Simar, who's this? Simo Simar? Stefan Simar, Canadian, of course. Playmaker, Stefan Simar. Penguins, Sharks, Ekblad, Anderson, oof, interesting names here. 86 overall, 43-year-old Alex Ovechkin. Would it be crazy to bring in Ovechkin? He'd, but we have already, we, already, we would ideally already have Panarin on the third line. So Ovechkin has a Russian, he, he would play fourth line. I don't know if he, you know, would he want to sign on to play fourth line? Is that two EA cheese to put Ovechkin on your fourth line and he scores 30 goals? I don't know. I don't know. Seattle, St. Louis, Tampa Bay. A lot of names in Tampa. Oof. Here's Barbashev. Milo's asking about Barbashev. Barbashev, 66 point season last year. Signed on for two more years at 8.62. Also, that would also mean a fantasy of can't play on the fourth. He has a fair, a very fair amount of trade value as well. Maple Leafs have Hannafin, Vancouver, Vegas, Washington, Valin, Miko Valin. Yeah, that's a lot of money on Barbashev. Miko Valin, uh, Winnipeg, Alexiev. 
know what this guy Moore Bobby Moore 14 goals one assist in 82 games <laughs> well, I stand to get yes so low all right so not a lot that stands out to me it might be more of a picks type of thing let me just sim the Coyotes pick so the clock won't time us out for a second so the Coyotes take helper in there um so it, who else are we looking to trade after Mugli and Johansson if we were to say yes of course we still want to think about moving out Guliev Hold on, we want to think about Guliev. Uh, Haikil, I'm not sure. For sure, in a, in a vacuum, I'm taking fourth line Ovi over fourth line Afanaseev. I'm not sure how realistic that may be. Maybe that'll be a trade deadline thing, though. Trade deadline fourth line would make more sense for Ovechkin, perhaps. Yeah, Kosa as well. Can't forget Kosa, of course. Right, yeah, Joe, Joe raises a good point as well. Uh, who's this guy? Morales, 58-20. Jordan Morales. Second round pick? Really? Jordan Mor I totally forgot about Jordan Morales. Only, only last year? He's already 20. Oof. Jordan. Yeah, Hellenius would be another one. Did I already pass him? Oh, here he is. Hellenius. So, yeah, Guliev, Kosa, Hellenius are three pieces we'd look at moving. Anybody else? I don't think so. Lucic. Uh, maybe there are. Simon, Valet, and or the, the Devil's guy. I don't know, the, the team doesn't want to move the 8th overall pick, though. I'll, I'll show you the value, how it probably doesn't add up. I'll show you how the value probably doesn't add up. Even the rights to have any Malkin, I'll throw in. How about that? If I go to Seattle, I think it was Seattle, wasn't it? If I go to Seattle, for the, and they're sellers. If I want to get the 8th overall pick from them, the value... Actually, the value is good. The value is good. But if they're sellers... I don't know if it makes a lot of sense. They don't want any of the four pieces, so it would really be forcing something that isn't there, in my opinion. But maybe we trade for the seventh. I mean, there's another team that makes more sense. At seven, maybe the Blue Jackets make more sense at seven. Uh, they're also sellers, though. Could we, yeah, I hear you, Cam. Again, if I take Guliev, just Guliev, Hellenius. Yeah, I don't want, <laughs> don't want to tactics it. <laughs> if I just take these three, again, it would probably work trade value-wise, but mm, yeah, it, it's... Or even Dallas? How about Dallas? Are they... What are they? They're also... They're conservative buyers. Do they want any of those pieces, though, would be the question. Uh, they don't want Kosa. They don't want Hellenius. Who's the other guy? Guliev. Uh, and they don't want Guliev. Great. So three pieces they don't want. Do they need them, though? I'm about to get timed out. They could use Guliev. Uh, they don't need a goalie, though. They have Ottinger. They could use a backup, I guess? And forwards. They have a lot of guys already signed on, eh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They already have 9 players, 82 overall plus. So again, I don't think they really want this package, especially for the sixth overall pick. If he's there at nine, maybe we try for it, but I don't think it works, ladies and gentlemen. Engvis goes fifth. The Stars take Korolev. Yikes, some tough picks going here. At seventh, the Blue Jackets go Rask. It's been said before, but I love how Data tries to keep things as realistic as possible, whereas most others, me included, do not. I appreciate it, Hobbsy. Maybe in my own personal one, I wouldn't, but for the series, I try to keep it work where I'm realistic and working in that fashion. Square peg, round hole, unfortunately. Yeah. So Farrell's going next. If he doesn't, we can consider it at nine, maybe, with LA. Let's see if he goes, and he does. He was a 63 overall, medium lead power forward, 17 years old, only two and a half star shooting, actually. He's a fine prospect, but that's a lot of value for eighth overall. Uh, with this, yeah, maybe he slips. <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised. Brynan, Sacho, Andrews, and finally, Genoway. So next, uh, the first pick on the block at 13 would be for Ranford, Leonard Ranford. Three years away, medium top six forward. Definitely not worth it, in my opinion. Rupp, I don't think so either, really. Kind of mid. Um, if there's anyone I would trade up for, I don't know. Not a great class to invest in. I don't think. I agree. Maybe we trade down to take Nabokov, right? I'd be more interested in doing that or taking one of these top six forwards in the second round. So I'd be very interested in Stanislav Nabokov, two years away, A-minus shooting. I think that's our move here. 
it, can we... So let's sim to our pick. Let's do that. Let's sim to our pick. And let's take a couple timeouts. The team that we trade down with, maybe we can get, add in Guliev and make a package out of it, you know? Yikes. Rough class here. Woof. Uh, so who goes next? So ran for so Rupp ended up being medium top four, 64 overall. One and a half star defense. Yeah, nothing that jumps out yet. Campoli plus Ling, Roosevelt, Smithson. We could take it at 29, but I'm saying maybe there's a package that works out to trade down. It's only, it would only be a trade down with a few picks anyways. Maybe like two picks. Like, oh, yeah, like a team, like, like maybe we trade down with the Devils just by like two picks, right? But it could work out in a package. Because we also want that prospect. With, yes, there you go. That could work. There you go. So if I say I want Busenius. What's his name again? Jason Busenius. If I want Jason Busenius. And pick number 32. If you want to play for the live. But this looks like low, medium at best. Yeah, we, we rolled for it like three episodes ago. When we, when we, when we, when we uh, whatever, generated it. I'll give you 29, and I'll give you... Hold on, what do you need here? Do you need Guliev? Do you need... Do you want Guliev? You want Guliev. Okay, I'll give you Guliev and 29. Do you need a goalie here? I wouldn't mind trading Kosa to the east. Uh, Schmid's expiring. Can I take back Schmid and Drieger just to make sure it makes sense for you, and I'll let them walk to free agency? Just to make sure that it works for you. I'll give you, unless, no, I'll take back just one of them, maybe. And I'll let them walk. I'll take back one, unless we want Shmi to double up in the franchise modes. How did Shmi do this season? Looked okay. Drieger was in the AHL. But if I say, okay, I'll say, okay, let's say, give me Schmid. 29, Guliev and Kosa for 32, Busenius, Schmid. And, um... Maybe a pick next year. Can I take a third next year? What do we have next year? Right, but he's an RFA, isn't he? Isn't Kosa an RFA? But the thing is, he might want too much money to be a backup, but he is a backup. No matter what his overall says, his numbers have not been good enough. So he's not going to find a team that wants to play him as a starter, realistically. He needs to earn his way back as uh, as a backup somewhere and then he can be a starter so yeah we have rounds one to five next year in the picks i'm not gonna be able to find a team that that would that would uh be a perfect fit and has no goalie next season i don't think it'd be hard to find that it has to be one who has would have him in the mix at least not where he's fighting with two other guys just one so yeah maybe we take back a late pick this year even what if instead of a third next year, I take back a sixth and a seventh this year, and like a fifth next year? Sorry, no, I can't even do that. A sixth of this year, and a fourth next year. How about that? A fourth and a sixth. Is that not enough? Fourth and a fifth, maybe? Let's try a fourth and a fifth. So, Mikhail Guliev, 29th overall pick, and Sebastian Kosa to the Devils for the 32nd overall pick. We moved down three spots. Jason Busenius, first round pick in two years ago, in 2027. The right to Schmid, a fourth next year and a fifth this year. New Jersey, what do you say? Trade accepted! All right! I doubt anybody will think New Jersey came out on the short end of the stick, so we could have gotten a little bit more value, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't want to cheese it. I'm okay with getting value in a fair deal as opposed to one that the, that the AI thinks is fair. Uh, the Devils, we have a bad history with them as they swept us out of the Stanley Cup final two years ago. But I'm okay with making a deal with them so that those players go to the Eastern Conference. We don't need to see them as much. And we'll call it a done deal. Thank you, New Jersey. That was a big deal for us right there. Sebastian Kosa, he's off. He was looking to be our starter at one point. We saved him from the AHL with Detroit. But, you know, now he'll... Not just a backup. He's going to fight for starts with Vanacek. They're both 85. So it makes sense for him to go to New Jersey, absolutely. We gave him life in the NHL. His numbers in the NHL weren't horrible, but they weren't too great either. I'm wishing you all the best over there. And Mikhail Guliev, one of the original members of the San Francisco Starfleet, not by expansion draft, but by trade. We acquired him from the Avalanche so that we wouldn't take uh, Landeskog, I think it was. Played him in the AHL for a little bit, then three years in the NHL. In 225 games, he had 111 points. He was a plus 21. He was averaging some big minutes. He played some big minutes out there. You can't be here. It doesn't make sense for you to be here. I refuse to believe that you are here, Doc Emmett Brown. I'm not sure on the quote there, RJ, but I love it anyways. Thanks for dropping it. 
Uh, does Colorado want Hellenius? We could draft the Swiss D-man next to Nabokov. Maybe, eh? We haven't traded Hellenius yet. So, Guliev, all the best in New Jersey. Thank you for your service here with Starfleet. It's been a pleasure having you through this entire franchise mode. And we will continue on. The Devils now. Oh, right. Doc Brown is uh, from Back to the Future. That's my bad. I should have known that one. Uh, Bouchard goes to the Devils with the 29th pick. And we can get Nabokov here at 32. Would the Avalanche want to move 33? Looks like it. Would they want Hellenius? We can take another Swiss... So we from one Swiss defenseman to another, Jeremy Rathji, we could pick him up three years away, but a gem defenseman from Switzerland would help with the nationalities. I don't know. If, we have a lot of defense. I wouldn't mind throwing a couple forwards in the system. There's even the medium goalie later, later here, Harvey Steckel. Who are our targets is the real question, probably. Medium lead, Fred Stepan, another medium lead goalie, four years away for him. This guy, Sergei Malkin, low elite gem, Grabeshkov, low, sorry, low top six gem. I don't know if I want to trade up for the, I'd rather trade for a couple thirds or something and get a couple of these guys. We definitely want Huberdo. yeah, he's the goalie target, there you go, taking the words out of my mouth there, Andrew. So, we can still take another time out here. Unless... No, I'm going to make the pick. I'm going to make the pick here at 32. Uh, okay, so let's head up to the podium. With the 32nd overall selection in the 2029 NHL entry draft, the San Francisco Starfleet are proud to select from Russia Stanislav Nabokov. Welcome to Team Bellow. You are 70 overall. Okay, I'll take it. Stanislav, 70 overall, medium top six. Not bad for thirtieth for thirty second overall. Absolutely, considering this draft class, another and getting an Estonian into the system as well. Um, yeah, I hear you, RJ. That's great for this class. Absolutely. So Stanislav Nabokov, thank you very much. I think, or the Finn Net Net medium top six. We have a lot of. Uh, if there's one forward position we have, we have Haikila, we have Hellenius. Oh, we're moving Hellenius. I don't know. Nat, how many years away? Three years away? I don't know. Let's sim this pick for the Avalanche. 33. Our next pick's at 50. Avalanche take... Ah, they took Rathji next. Yeah, they took Rathji next. He was medium top four. Just we have a lot of defense, though. Defensive defenseman, two-star defense. He was okay. Um, so the Sharks then take Shepard, medium top six. So now there's going to be the medium top six. So we'll get back to the, the guys who are going 11, 12, 13, 14. Now they're going to go here in the second round. Natnin, Kearns, Foot, medium top six kind of guys. Can we wait till 50? We pass on Steckel. If we go to 50, we could take, we could trade down from 50, and try to get two picks in the late 50s for Malkin and Grabeshkov, Ukrainian and Estonian. Even Gudis would be good four years away, Grabeshkov three years away. I wouldn't mind getting like 57 and 58 or something. That's it. If you take defenseman too late, it's the EA is going to get you. So here's 50. Where's 50? 50's here. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. The Maple Leafs have two seconds. Can I take these two seconds from you, Toronto? Can I get your two seconds? I'll give you 50. Hold on. Here's what's going to happen. I want 47 and 55. He rose around 60. I'll even take 59. I want three seconds... In exchange, I'll give you two seconds. So I'll give you 50 and 62. I don't want 47. No, no, no. Now, hold on. We can't go too crazy because Huberto is around 60. As well. Hold on. Let's double check where Huberto is first. Where is Huberto going before I make any crazy moves here? Because if we take 59, 59 is going to be risky. We'll take Malkin 57, then it'll be risky. Huberto is going 66. So we want... 57, 58, and 66. 57, 58, and 66. Maybe we just have a ton of picks in the second round here. So I'll take 55 and 59. I'll give you 50 and Hellenius. 
How does that sound? Oops. A second and Hellenius, and then you can move up five picks and get Hellenius, and you give me 59th pick as well. They also have 63, but we... Do we want... I don't know. I'm thinking, am I making this too big of a thing? If we take 63, who do we send back on our side now? So I was going to take back value, now i got to give more value. We have to throw in some sort of rookie here, probably. Like, Morales could be a guy, 58 and 20. If we're cutting him, 58 and 20, these guys at 60 are higher up. So if I throw in Morales, this could go here. Second round pick last season, Jordan Morales. So a second round pick last season, a first round pick from like five years ago, and pick 50 for three seconds. Toronto, what do you say to this? Still rejected. We have 20 seconds left. And if, why, why give me 20 seconds if it's not 20 seconds? You make me laugh, game. Game, you make me laugh. 55, 59, 63. Maybe 50. Hellenius. Uh, where's this guy again? Where'd I go? Yeah, Morales. Um, Do we cut Galvis? Who are our goalies in the AHL next season? If Mikola and Greaves are 1 and 2, or even Schmid's fighting in there, in the AHL, Eminen. Do I have to sign Zherdev yet? And Galvis? Okay, I won't trade a goalie. I won't trade a goalie yet. Who else can we trade from this system? Nesterov? Is his nationality? I think he was Russian, right? Sniper, 3 star shooting. I don't know, he's probably nothing. You know, he probably won't become anything by, like, keeping these guys. Sereda? Did we throw Sereda in? With the French nationality, but he probably won't grow at this point. I'll throw Sereda in. What do you say here, Toronto? Still not quite there. Sereda. Silas Sereda. Who else? Oh, Mal the rights to Malkin. How about that? The rights to Evgeny Malkin. The rights to Evgeny Malkin. So rejected. What else can I throw in? I don't want to give up these. I prefer to keep some of these late picks. But Nikulin's still young. He's 74 at 21, isn't he? Is he 74? Yeah, he's 74 at 21. That's, uh, that has 7th D, 3rd pair potential. If you can get to 77, 78. I don't mind moving him, but I prefer not to if you don't have to. We acquired a fifth from New Jersey, so I guess I could give you a sixth here. If I throw in a sixth, what do you say? You're still... Wow, we're quite far off. The fifth from New Jersey? Yeah, but it's not enough value. It's not enough... If a fifth isn't getting it, then Martinson, Martinson's not going to get it either. Okay, I'll 50% retain on... Uh, yeah, we already moved Moogly. I'll retain on Malkin just for the fun of it. If not, we'll have to think about a different approach here. Okay, retain on Malkin. And the sixth. Now what do you say to Rano? Is Rano? No, not quite. Okay, so we're going to let the Coyotes make their pick. And let's just do it for the two seconds and try to get another later on. We can just do it for the two seconds and not force it. Not break our heads. Natman goes there, 64 overall. Yeah, maybe we just do it for two seconds then. So if I... So let's, let's first just get 55 and 59. Let's first tackle 55 and 59. I'll give you 50. And Hellenius. Probably even straight up it wouldn't go, but I'll try it, get, taking a pick back. Can I get a 7th back from you, Toronto? Rejected. Straight up. Rejected. Now I can... So what, now if I'll add... Now I'll add Morales. But now I definitely want to pick back. I'm adding a second round pick from, from last season. Basically we're saying we're giving up on him. I want a 4th and a 7th back. Okay, what do you say now, Toronto? Far off. 4th. You aren't where you need to be. Ah, oh, boy. Not making it easy on us. Hmm. 6th straight up. 
quite far off in value still. Ugh. Fifth, still. With Malkin's rights. It won't, uh, if, no, if, you know, if Malkin's rights and a fifth don't get it done, then Verkun's not going to get it done. So we got to go for one pick then. We got to move one pick. Uh, so maybe we just keep 50 and try to trade Hellenius for 55 then. What do you say to this? Not even. Still not even. Okay, so I'll trade with a different team who wants Hellenius. Forget it. Bye-bye, Toronto. Thanks for wasting my time. Okay. So here's 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Okay, let's trade with Ottawa. No, Washington. Let's trade with Washington then. We'll do it piecemeal. Let's trade with Washington. I'm going to give you 50 in Hellenius, but I want to take back value so that I can make my other picks. You want Hellenius? Great. Hellenius and 50. Yeah, yeah. It was the right thing to do. Uh, HH and B Holler and Howl and Bemoan and Ball. Love it. Add it on, Joe. Tack it on. I know. Draft val value, excuse me, is ridiculous. We're targeting uh, Malkin and Grebeshkov. Estonian, uh, yeah, Estonian and, and uh, Ukrainian. Can I take back two fifths and a sixth? Just throw it. Hey, great! All right, thank you! So, Consta Hellenius, thank you for everything. One of our first draft picks, same with Mowgli. He's off to the Washington Capitals, see in the Eastern Conference. They wanted him, so there you go. Trading with Ottawa despite Toronto would have been great, true. But we get him off to uh, Washington in his two seasons with us 49 points in 145 games. It's just not enough space for him, wasn't working out. Give him a fresh start somewhere else. So now, with that extra value, we can trade for those other picks. So first, let's trade let's sim to pick 53. At pick 53, I'll go ahead and take the first guy we want, and that's Malkin. In an ideal world, we trade down a little bit more. But, like, no, I'm not going to play games and, and risk it. So 53, we'll take Malkin. Low top 6, Sergei Malkin. Low top 6, Ukrainian. Great to have him in the system. A gem as well. 62 overall, two-way forward. Lovely. Okay, good stuff. Next up, our pick is at 62, but I want to take, uh, what's his name, Grabeshkov. Cools goes next. I want to take Grabeshkov, and he's going to go at 59. So let's see who goes here. That's 56. Phillips, step on medium leap goalie. We're now at 57. So 57, 58. Yeah, he'll go at 59. Grabeshkov will. 57, 58, 59. Uh, so the Kings just made a pick. Maybe they'll be willing to trade one now. I don't want to even trade with Toronto, but maybe they'd be willing to trade one since they... Actually, did they just trade for it? Did they just trade for that pick? I think they did, eh? Because the Sharks had that pick. All right, I guess we're going back to Toronto. So I'll let... Them, yeah, it wouldn't make sense. They take two goalies. They double up on the goalies. Wow. They saw their guys. They wanted them. They went for them. So at 58 now, Toronto, I'll give you... I want 62 for Huberto in an ideal world. Could I give you 81 plus a couple of... A, plus a, a late fifth and a late sixth, or just my second late... Not second, not late necessarily. Maybe not even, a third and a fifth. Third and a fifth. No, they don't want to do it. Of course they don't. Third, a fifth, and a sixth. Now they're dancing in the streets. Thank you, Toronto. All right, a third, a fifth, and a sixth to get this pick at 58. With it, we'll draft the Estonian, Sergei Grabeshkov... Three years away, playmaking centerman, great, there you go. The highest I've ever seen a goalie go in a draft, uh, ever, ever? I saw, I think I saw one go top three in like NHL 14 or something. But in the, in the last five games, the highest is maybe like, I don't know, top 10 Somewhere around 10, maybe. Anyways, Grabashkov, welcome to the team. 62 overall, low top six, playmaking centerman. Definitely a, a ways to go for the growth, but happy to have him in the system with a nationality to boot. Okay. And then the Maple Leafs take boys. Ah, oh, okay. So what was it even for? At 62. Actually, just one more pick. Let's sim through it. Uh, XLB. So at pick 62 now, do we want to take our guy or can we trade down to Huberdeau? I know, we should probably take our guy. We'll go ahead and take Sylvain Huberdeau from the Bay Como Dracar. Uh, six foot three, playing in the queue. Three years away at 18 is very good. Hopefully his, his overall should be in the 60s, I would think. 
Donc, Sylvain Huberdo, bienvenue à l'équipe avec le 59e sélection. Non, 62e, excuse-moi. 62, 62 overall. Medium lead, that's a great pick. Other goalies who went higher, I'm very happy with Sylvain. Salut Sylvain, there you go. Avec le 62e sélection dans le repêchage. Ooh, repêchage. Let's go to the draft class, yes. Actually, where's our, where's our next pick? 80, did we say, no, we traded the 80. Next pick is at 99. Next pick's at 99. Okay, between here and 99, anyone that we really, really want between here and 99. Not just interesting, but really, really, really want. Um, is it pretty well five picks away from your actual picks? Is the leeway otherwise trade down? No, I'd say it's probably two, more like two picks. More like two picks. But the reason I don't trade down if it's three, between three and five, I don't even bother making a trade usually. Because the AI is, even if you try to get a seventh out of it, they'll say no. So, but realistically for risk, you can usually have a two or three pick buffer. Three is pretty generous, more like one or two. So Geisbers, who's this five foot eight, five years away? No, I'll pass. Uh, low top six, four years away. Rycroft, low top six gem, Jonas Rycroft, but he's 20. Yeah? Low top four. A few guys that are interesting, but none that I don't know if I really want to trade up for. Maybe we trade down even. I think maybe, yeah, we'll trade down to take Stortin. Even though he's 20, I definitely want medium league potential. So we'll trade down for 111. That's what we'll do. Sim to 99. Uh, so that's 99. 100. 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't want to trade with the Maple Leafs, so we'll go for 109 with the Panthers. So pick 109. Even trading down 10 picks, you can barely squeeze a 7th out of it. So can I give you 99 for 109, and I take back a 7th in next year's draft? What do you say here? What do you say? Reject it, of course. That's the problem. They reject it. They're not even interested whatsoever. Uh, does a player being a gem actually affect the player, or is it a player above the value? No, it's... In theory, it should affect the player's development. I don't think it's... But, uh, maybe it's also gem in to say, like, he's a steal for this value. It's hard to say exactly. It's never been explained, really. Check exp... Oh, good idea, Myla. Maybe I take an expiring contract back from... From, uh... From Florida, then flip that... For a pick. A third and expire. Already a third for a fourth would barely go through, probably. They'll probably they probably say, Alright, after thinking it over, we'll accept your offer. Take a sixth two years from now? <laughs> Doubt it. I think even a seventh two years from now wouldn't go through. No. I'll take a seventh even further. I'll take it a <laughs> I'll take a 7th even further down. 2032 7th. Still rejected, so... <laughs> yeah. They'd say, okay, after thinking it over, we'll see you out on the ice. Uh, expiring. Sorry. Expiring. Like, Nelson here? Brock Nelson, you want to trade him? Hey, there you go. I'm happy to accept your proposal. Great. Now, what can I trade Brock Nelson for? If anything, can I get lucky? Fine trade. Let's see if you're a genius, Myla. All the way at the bottom here. And we, want, we should trade Malkin's rights as well. Nelson. Hey, we get something out of it. Hey, actually, it's nothing of much value. Vimelka, 4.475 for four years. Would a team want Vimelka? What's Vimelka like? We could even sign and trade him. He's a, ah, Vimelka's an 82 overall. Why the Cowboys want to trade Vimelka? Too many goalies in the system, I guess? Too much money? We could, no, Vimelka should stay in Arizona. Uh, we could keep him, but he's American, right? Yeah. Zadarov and Jones makes more sense. Just playing the trading game here. He, so if we sign Nelson, he has bottom six potential. He's probably going to regress more than Cunning can't play. I prefer not to. Zadarov and Jones. Let's do that with Florida. Again with Florida. We just we just traded with Florida. Um, and now... If I try to trade... Where'd he go? 
defense. Zadarov, eh, he's an 82 overall. Should we keep him as a Russian? But then we can't play with uh, Romanov. Nah, no, just, just dump him. Zadarov, we can trade him for Brock and Nelson. Zadarov and Jones together. No trades found. No, I don't think any team would offer us a 7th. But we can try with Zadarov and Jones for a 7th. Either of them for 7th round picks. Yeah, but where does he play, Milo? That's the problem. Where does he play? I don't want to play, pay three million for a seventh defenseman. Okay, let's go to pick one hundred nine for a moment here. Let's just make our pick finally. Uh, oh, controller's getting low. Trade him back for Nelson. We could. All right, Stortini, medium elite Dane Stortini. So he's gonna be like forty eight overall, but medium elite potential. I want that value. Uh, fifty four. Okay, at least fifty four. Medium elite fifty four. Dane Stortini. Grinder, no, he's a two-way D. Okay, sorry, I thought I saw Enforcer. Sorry, but half-star physical at six foot three. All right, Dane. Next picks at one thirty-three. We'll see if there's a trade to be made with those guys in a moment. But next picks at one thirty-three. Anyone who really want between now and then? This guy might be immediately gem Jose Nesbit or Jose Nesbit. Oh, there's also this guy though, Chris Montador, six foot medium goalie. And even Cam Beats, yeah, Cam Beats. Actually, we could take Cam Beats without even or Montero without even having to make a trade. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, let's sim to next pick and see who's there at 133. Uh, that's the first pick of round five. Let's see, round four. Nesbit went. Mrs. Nesbit. <laughs> So now we can go ahead and take Montador or, or Cam Beats. Do we take the medium league goalie 18 and 5 years away? Or Cam Beats, also 18 and 5 years away, but a German winger. German winger. I think I think the pick to make would probably be Montador. But you get a medium league goalie like once per draft at least. How often do you get a German winger with decent potential? It's probably more rare to get Cam Beats. So I'd say we'd probably go Cam Beats here. Well, I'd take a sip of water. Is it Bel... Oh, the colors. My uh, reading of the, of the colors. Totally uh, skewed there. Am I getting that Belgium? Am I right? Yeah, it is Belgium. My sincerest apologies. I kept saying Germany. I don't think we've ever... And that's uh, that's even more rare then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Belgium sells me. Thanks for raising that point, Gen Z. I'm so sorry that I didn't catch that. Welcome to Team Jonah. Medium top six, 57 overall. Let's do it. Welcome aboard from Belgium. From Belgium. Uh, next pick at 152. Do you want to make any more? German wingers are pretty rare. Belgium wing wingers are super rare. It's not too much of a pain. I don't know. We have... Like, meaning goalies come up often enough. But let's... Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. We want to trade for Kimo Elin, and that's who we want. That's who we want. I think that's what we got to go for. 141. So 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139. Let's try to trade with Dallas. Let's try to trade with Dallas. A Belgian NHL player? I don't think there has been. That would be a first. Yes, Elian's cousin. Uh, no, not the Star Wars. It's a Star Trek. Welcome, Hootie. It's our Star... Well, is it a Star Trek series? Not really. It's just our franchise set in the Star Trek kind of universe, right? So if I give you 152 for 138, what else would I have to add to that? I can add the... Here, and here's where I'm going to add all those uh, expiring contracts. Let's see if that'll work. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Hootie. So you want, okay, you want Jones. I'll give you Jones. You want Evgeny Malkin? Uh, you don't, but I'm going to see if you want him anyways. Or maybe I should try without him first. So Jones and a fifth. And there, okay, it was good. It was enough. It was enough. Thank you very much. Jones was enough to move up. Now we can take that defenseman at 138. Montero was 48 overall medium elite, so yeah, it would have been a process for sure. So we'll take uh, Elon and now the defenseman. Kimo Ilanen, six foot four defensive defenseman, low elite, fifty two overall. Thank you very much. Getting more value on the team, making more cuts, more players get moved out. Next pick at one eighty five. We could use some more players' rights to move up. I don't think there's much more we want in this draft. One eighty five. That might be it. I don't know if there's anybody else we even want in this entire class. If we sort by potential, 
So was anybody else pinned? Not even. We sort by potential. Anybody else? Low elites, maybe not even. No. Three bar medium top six, we think it risk, but I'd rather trade for picks next year. There is a low top six Brizgalov. Vitaly Brizgalov. So we can, yeah, six foot five, that's good with, nah, I don't mind that. Let's try and take, the, so the, at 255, so the last pick in the draft, let's trade for the last pick in the draft from the Avalanche. He'll go with 231. We'll take my 231. I'll give you 185. So I'll give you a sixth. You give me, I want a sixth, a seventh now. I want a sixth and a seventh next year. And I'll give you Zadorov or Zadorov and I'll end Malkin. Would that be crazy? You want Zadorov even, that's great. Ah, over this, oh, hold on, I can retain. So Malkin wouldn't work anyway. So I'll give you, Z just the Zadorov would be all I can give you. Zadorov, retained, rejected. Okay, can I get a sixth and a seventh? Rejected, okay, so two sevenths then. Can I give you a sixth and Zadorov for two sevenths? What do you say, Colorado? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous! How can this not go through? A sixth, I'd have to trade a sixth for a seventh, basically, which would be crazy. A sixth and Zadorov. Who else is expiring on this team? Who else are we not bringing back next year? Uh, who's a Haltonen? He has potential, though. He could be in a different trade. Ryan Suzuki, maybe? We like Sabrango. We like every, all these guys. Voight? Let's throw Voight in there. There you go. Low body. He's not coming back next year. Voight. Too far off. Let's just keep adding to it. Oh my goodness. What a joke. For two sevenths. Who's this? Godet. There we go. We can add Godet to it. Who else is in here? Kisikov. Low bottom six. Okay. Kisikov gets added in. Now what do you say? Reject it. Just a bit low for us. This is crazy. It's all players are going to let walk anyways, but I can't believe that this doesn't go through. Uh, who else could we throw in? Who's not coming back? Is Sereda coming back? I don't know. Klimovich. I don't want to give a future 7th. I want the 7th for future trades where a 7th actually could push a meaningful trade over the edge. Not that I'm overpaying. Trade another team and lowballing us. The, the, the thing is, yeah, they want Suzuki. The thing is, they want to give both these picks, and they want both of these things as well. It's not the Avalanche just lowballing us. It's the game being broken, unfortunately. Okay, they want Ryan Suzuki here. Take Ryan Suzuki. Eska, welcome to the stream. Just, okay, then forget it. Forget it. What a joke. <laughs> Come on. We'll take our guy. I mean, I'll take our guy at 185. I'll take our guy at 185 and say forget it. That's sad. That is really sad. Aska, thanks for joining. Just at a time when I was a bit frustrated, but the draft comes to an end with uh, solid selections, I believe. Vitaly Brzgalov, welcome to the team. Six foot five, adding some Russian grit to the team with that size. 52 overall. How's the physical? At least one star? One star physical. Great. I know. Seventh rounder is worth more than Bitcoin. All right, so there's the draft, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can we get anything for Malkin, or do we just call it there? So help me if we get a 7th for Malkin. No, no trades found. What if I do Malkin and Suzuki? No trades found. And Yannick. No trades found. And Klimovic, just for fun. No trades found. And Brizgala. You're telling me no team in the league wants to give a 7th for that package? Alright, so there's the draft, ladies and gentlemen. We made it. A little over an hour to get through the draft, pretty much. Well, through since the start of the episode. Nabokov, Malkin, Grabeshkov, Huberto, Stortini, Kambitz, Ilanin, and Brzgalov. Going by nationalities. Um, here's an idea for the next year. Hold on. I made a 40-team, 40 40-nation 40 custom league controlling Team USA. Fantasy draft using order of the IIHF rankings from their website. Would be a sick series if you did something like that. NHL 25. Wow, Hootie. You know what? I don't know if you're in the Discord's Hootie or if anyone else can copy and paste that. Put that in the Discord server and pin it. That's a great idea. That's a really interesting idea. That would be really cool. Thanks for leaving it. So one of my nationalities, we went Estonian, Ukrainian, Estonian, Canadian, American, um, Belgian, Finn, Russian. 
Yeah, per, not, not many Gen Z. So a solid draft for the nationalities. Very solid draft for the nationalities. Now, let's advance a day and see what they tell us. Hey, all these scouts. Tons of scouts expiring. Let's get ready to break out the calculator here as well. All right, let me just re re-sign these guys. A lot of scouts needing money this year. Maxim Svitov. Hobbsy has great ideas. Grachev. Vorobiev. And we traded out a lot of value here as well. We traded out Muli, we traded out Helenius, we traded out Kosa, we traded out Guliev. As the title of the episode said, making cuts. Not cutting into Deanna, Deanna Troy and the peptide cake. Cutting into the team itself. On uh, this guy down here. Topi Rene. Okay. Any coaches? Coaches are good. Okay, here we go. Okay, let me break out the calculator for this one. Okay, we are ready. Okay, looking at all expiring now. So right away, we want Cider, we want Panarin. Malkin, we're going to let walk. What does he want, even? He, ah, he doesn't want a lot. But his potential is going to keep going down. We don't have space for him in the lineup. Malkin's going to walk. We'll let him go somewhere else. He wasn't great for us in the playoffs, either. He will leave. All right? Zadorov, I don't think we got the money for him as well. I don't want to pay him four and a half million to be seventh defenseman. So Zadorov will walk. Now, Panarin's the big one. We have 27.405 million. We got the money. Panarin, what is he looking for? Great. That's a good value deal. Well, I want to give him two years, but we got to keep going one year because uh, his overall will continue to go down. 85%, 7.37. I think one year, 8 million is perfect sense for a guy who's going to be transitioning to a third line role. He had a 100 point season. So one year, 8 million, even as a third liner. Are there any active NHLers age, under age 30 who'd have a first ballot Hall of Fame induction if they retired today? Yeah, sure. Nah, McDavid would be one for sure. Uh, first ballot would be tough. Like Dreisaitl could definitely have a case. McKinnon would have a case. But first ballot Hall of Fame? No, only McDavid probably. And even then, first ballot would be tough if they retired today. I mean, Burry retired young enough, right? And he got in. Hey, Nikita, there's the door. Cheerio. <laughs> well, even McCarr, maybe, yeah. How long a draft recording? Oh, it takes a while, Hobbsy. It takes a while. <laughs> All right, so yeah, one year, eight million on Panarin as a thank you. We'll give him his deal. I think Kucherov's about the same age. Maybe 36? No, no. He's a bit older, even. Kucherov, I'm not sure exactly. We'll see. Mo Sider now. Here's the big question. Whoa! Yeah, we gotta pay more, though, on Mo Sider. We gotta do right by him. He was making 7 point what last year? Does it tell us? Uh, 7.17. I would think we gotta pay Mo Sider at least seven and a half, eight million to stay. That's a four-year deal. What does he want? Would he go eight years? Eight years would be in room to 36. I wouldn't mind going eight years. Eight by 7.5 maybe on Mo Sider. Eight by 7.5 is probably what I'm thinking. Eight by six would... No, it wouldn't go. We could do eight by 6.8. Eight by seven. Eight by eight could work. Eight by eight probably makes the most sense. Don't want to cheese it too much. I was ready to pay into the eights. Do we go eight by eight? A guy first pair making... Yeah, I mean, he's playing 25 minutes a night. He's a mule. The new Johan Franzen. I think eight by eight makes sense on Cider. Yes, he's coming off a down year, but that's production. That's the game looking at his production. I'm looking at 25 minutes a night, 100 plus blocks, 100 plus hits, plus nationality. That's what I'm looking at. So if you're going to sign for eight years, I think you want more than 6.8. That is worth the money. He's great. Make it eight point. No, I feel making it, going from 6.5 to 8 is me feeling guilty. I'm not going to go to 8.5. But 8 by 8, let's do it. If the, if, you know, this is the most cider of, the, of this universe, not the real life universe. But still, again, for a first pair guy, for, for lots of, for, for his last major contract, right? If it's his last big deal, it's got to be the 8 by 8. Yeah. 8 by 8 of most cider, he'll definitely sign that. Great. Afanasayev. Well, yeah, I'm, I'd be happy to keep him. I'd go two years, one million on Afanasayev. Owen Beck, Bizu Bizu. 
I could, he could, ah, one more year as RFA, why not? One year, one million to stay as an RFA, why not? Yannick, we would like him for depth, and he wants a cheap deal, love it. I'd even go two years at that price. Two years at uh, max two-way deal, if you want to, I'll give you two years if you want a two-way deal. Luke Cunnan, he's going to say he didn't get enough playing time, but I'll offer him his, mm, I don't know. Well, wait on Cunnan. Suppose I'd like to keep, good for the depth nationalities and all that. Uh, I'd go two years even. 1.425. 1.25. 1 1.25 for two years on Sposal. Let's see what he says. Sobrango was good. Good depth as well. He wants 1.2 million though. Come on, Sobrango. It's 1.025 for one year on Sobrango. Who's this guy? Chiona. Lucas Chiona. We had him for the AHL this year. Eight points in 19 games, or do we claim him off waivers, maybe? Chiona, is that possible? I think he was a waiver guy. What does he want? He would take league minimum. Why not? One year league minimum, two-way. No, sorry, maximum for a two-way deal, I mean. Ryan Suzuki. Uh, still wants a two-way deal. What's he been doing here? 50 points last year. It was a down year for him. Less ice time. Down year for Suzuki. But I like him. <laughs> Klimovich played more, but only 6 points in 19 games in the end. Now, Klimovich, I'll let walk. Suzuki, I'll sign. 800k, let's see if, he's, if he wants it. Uh, Lucic, I want to sign. I liked what he did. Let's go one year again. Actually, no, let's qualify him. I'm not giving him 1 million. Marchand needs a contract, of course. His entry-level deal. Cam Marchant, we'll call him. Cam Marchant, the, is he, he's Polish or... No, he's Austrian. Seventh overall pick in 2027. I hope he won't be a bust. Let's really hope that he gets some growth this year. Uh, Wall. Jalen Wall, second round pick in 2027. He'll get his entry-level deal. Uh, Skyler, Sheldon Odell, sixth round pick. He's grown okay-ish. Give him his deal. 25k less. Uh... Verkunen, Verkunen, second round pick. He hasn't grown very well. Yeesh. And Nestrov, Artem Nestrov. I said I wanted to keep him. That's why I didn't trade him. These guys want max two way deal, uh, max ELC deals. For the goalies, Schmid. Do we want to keep Schmid? I'd be open to it. Hey, he wants two million? Probably not then. Zherdev needs his contract. If Zherdev, Gal Galvis has to go, probably, right? I don't know. We'll see when there's growth by the start of the season. Let's advance a day and see what everybody has to say. All right, scouts are on board. Love it. Love it, love it. Everyone's happy. Big party in the break room. Everyone's happy. Toki Rene. Okay, easy decision for Moritz Sider. There is a huge weight lift, ladies and gentlemen. The German right... Pair, right, first pair defenseman to play with Cole Hudson for the next eight years. Let's do it. Um, depends, you know. Greaves or Schmid could be could be a three three headed monster. Galvis could also stay as AHL third goalie. True. Murray Sider, hopefully our lock for the future. We had him in AHL twenty two with the Flyers. Didn't see him in twenty three. Now he's back in twenty four with San Francisco. Love it. Moritz, welcome to the team. And Panarin's on board for another season. Big smiles. Sobrango wants to test free agency. I offered him one year, one million, one way. He was an AHL player. Suzuki, Svozel. Okay, so Svozel, I'll just qualify you. Easy decision for Fanaseev and for Yannick. Good. Odell, Zherdev, Beck, Chiona, Wall, Marcha, Marchant, Verkunin, Nesterov. All right. That leaves us with 13.48 million. Uh, okay, so first the UFAs. UFAs... Sobrango, I wanted to keep you. You are a good story. He was I liked having him. Uh in the in the playoffs he had one game and he looked good in that one game. 46 points in the AHL, but sorry buddy, I'm not signing you for a million. Cunnin, Luke Cunnin. Building his DHOF case. Yeah, he's already a, a, a nominee in the with the Flyers series, so he could be a double nominee. 1.2, I'll offer you 1.1, 1. 1. 1 year 1.1 1. 1 for being a trooper to cut in, but it might be that he's going, yeah, we can get him cheaper in, in UFA, so we might just let him walk in the end. Svozel, qualify, Haltonen, medium top six, sniper, I could go one more year on Haltonen, yeah, I could do one more year on him. 
Uh, Kisikov, we're going to let him walk. Yeah, we'll let him walk. Lucic is qualified. Gaudet, walk. Voigt will walk. Sereda will give him a contract. Come on, Silas. He wants 1.2 million. It's such a broken thing in the game. Only four spots left for contracts? Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, Ericsson will get signed most likely as well. Actually, I should, I should probably do it now, shouldn't I? Nah, I'll do it when the season starts. Um, Schmied. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I just realized it's at 42, so yeah, we have more than that. Schmied. Yeah, it would be just once. Just once, Hobbsy. Uh, 1.975. I wouldn't mind signing him just to see. He did so well in our Vancouver series. One year, 1.75 if you want it. If not, free agency is waiting for you. Is that everybody? Yes. Now advance another day. Couple scouts. Rejection from Cunnin, so he'll walk. And Schmid is... Wants the, the financials adjusted, so he will walk. Alright. So, Cunnin released... And uh, Schmid released. All right. Whew, there we go. That is everybody, correct? Just the RFAs who are qualified? Good. All right, so there is the re-sign phase. Nice and painless. Let's move on to free agency now. Let's do it. Moving forward. July 1st, 2029. Let's see who is in the free agent pool. Let's do it. I bet Kutrov's here, right? Uh, no, don't see Kutrov. Looking at the UFAs, Adam Fox is in here wanting 17 million. Tyson Forrester, Adam Pellick, Chikrin, Hayton, Neighbors, Besser, Ovechkin wants one year 7 mil. Erickson Eck, Colton, Bemstrom, Wallstrom, Kubelik, Sandin, Sharon Govich. Sharon Govich would be great for the nationality, yeah? But let's think about where we have spots to fill in the lineup. Defense, yeah. Zadorov wants 4.85. Goaltending, Schmid is the top guy on the market, so it makes sense why he would have wanted to go to free agency, I guess. Glad we traded for Cider, yeah. The market would have been uh, would have been a high price to pay. Um, contracts? Anybody open for an extension right now, by the way? Stenberg, what do you think about Stenberg? That's a lot in free. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that type of number. I've seen more, even a little bit, but that's very high. For, it's an offensive defenseman who wants crazy money, right? We're actually not washed yet. No, he isn't crazy. No, he is not. We could go one more year on Stenberg, keep him as an RFA, or we can sign him longer term. Don't need to do it now, but just to throw it out there. Okay, so forward. So if one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we need a top nine forward unless we're saying that Haikila could be a top nine forward next year. I don't know if I want to put all my eggs in that basket. And that's where Sharon Govich gets very interesting to me. We could use a top nine forward. It would be Panarin, Lindholm, and somebody else. Medium top 4D enforcer at 23rd overall in my franchise mode, says Myla. <laughs> Love it. If I look at UFA forwards, sorting by overall. 4.5 star physical, amazing. Guys who are third liners, I would I prefer to not take a centerman because I want uh, Stenberg to stay there. For a year or two, yeah. Emil Bemstrom, eh. Aikila needs me in the top 9 to grow. That's true. Kubalik, yeah, true, Kubalik, but he wants 4 by 6 Sharon Govich wants 2 by 5.7 That makes a lot more sense for me, for, for the trajectory. I know Haikil needs to be on the third to grow, but do we just say forget it and call it on him growing, right? That's the thing. Yes, he needs to be on the third to grow, but do we just say forget it? Plus, bringing in a Belarusian player would be big for the nationalities. Yeah, yeah, agreed, Sharon Govich over Kubalik. Who else is in there? Dickinson, Kopp. No one else who really stands out as much to me. Barabanov could stand out. Yeah, Russian, though, can't play with Panarin. Someone who's not a Russian and not a Swede. Manjapane. Tough numbers for Manjapane. JT Miller as a veteran. JT Miller as a veteran could be something interesting. He's definitely gone down, though, in the points. Tomas Hurdle as a Czech player. Would be very helpful. Can't play with, then he can't play with Yannick. If anything happens with that. Not, it's not a big deal. But there's a reason he wants one year one million. 
I think Sharon Govich is the better piece for a Stanley Cup competing team. Yeah, he just scored 56 points last season. I think we go Igor Sharon Govich. Let's try sending him an offer. He wants two years. I'm open to two years. Crazy how his, his ask for one or three is so different. We have the money. So let's go two years on him. It's sad that it costs this much. But let's go two years. He wants two. I'd prefer to go a little cheaper, like 5.5. But it does scare me a little bit if no one else, if, if another team tries to get him. I'd prefer to go 5.5 for a third liner. Yeah, but then who plays on the third line? I don't know if I, I don't want to put all my eggs in Haikila's basket. If he is, if he, if season start comes and he's 22 years old and 77 overall, I don't want him to be a full time third liner on a Stanley Cup competing team. So I'd rather go for a guy who I can have on the third. And if Aikila forces him his way in, or there's injuries or what, we can always reconsider things later on. I think Sharon Govich makes more sense for us right now. Maybe it doesn't work out, but I'd prefer to go 5.5 on Sharon Govich. I know we have money, but it's a principle of, I don't know if I want to pay 6 million for a guy who's third line. Two years, 11 million on Sharon Govich. What was he just making last season? Doesn't tell us, eh? No. Unless we go... Oh, then Ovechkin's another Russian. If Ovechkin, if, if Ovechkin's in the lineup, that means Panarin has to move up. That means Lysel has to move down. Lysel just scored 75 points. Then that mean, or Rubrik moves down, but no, Rubrik needs growth. So no, we can't bring in a Russian. Okay, Sharon Govitz, two years, 5.5. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Send it. Bang. Okay, aside from that, let's look at all skaters, sorting by potential. Any good young players out there that might be of interest to us? Breelin, who's this? Marcus Breelin, a Latvian power forward, five-star physical, four-and-a-half-star shooting, 90 shot blocking, 94 stick checking, uh, 48 goals in the AHL. Um, hello! <laughs> Marcus Breelin, welcome. Get in here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Adam Fox wants big money. Uh, I'll do two years to keep him as an RFA. Two years. I really want him. I really want this guy. Two years, 1.5. There's the extra money from Sharon Govich. Marcus Breland. There's our grit guy, Myla. Woo Usually we search potential and there's no one super interesting. Hellenius. Is he, is he an unrestricted free? Hellenius. Wa what? Hello, Latvia. Hellenius got dropped to free agency, and here three teams want him, so at least three teams want him. That's crazy from the Devils. Who's this guy? Datsuk. Oleg Datsuk. Another Latvian! Do we go for two Latvians? He's our seventh defenseman. Oleg? Oh my god, I think we have to, but he wants a lot of money. Not a lot, but for a seventh D, that's a bit much. You know what? If he wants one year, if he wants one year, 1.5, I'll give it to him. But if he doesn't, I understand. One year, 1.5. If you want it, then take it. Wow. Hello, Latvia. Sheesh. Um, Latvia coming in hot. Anybody else who interests us? 22, Makella. Who's the Samu Makella? A Finn. Uh, Forstrom. Forstrom, a Swede. It reminds me of Matthias Forstrom. Oh, true. We have Svozel. True. Sorry. Well, we'll see what happens. I already sent the offer. Sorry about that. I, didn't think, I forgot about Svozel. Not a big deal, but I forgot about Sposal, I'll be honest. Okay. Anybody for the goaltenders, as always? Just checking out there. High starter. Medium starter. This guy, Brindamore. Can we look at other 83-84s on the chance that Igor goes somewhere else? We'll look when we hear from him and we see who's still available. I want to send out two offers, right? I don't want to send out two offers. Russell Brendamore. Not Rod Brendamore. Russell Brendamore. Played with Toronto just a little bit one game. I would be tempted to sign him, but we have, I don't know, could we have a third goalie with Greaves? Would it be crazy to bring in Brendamore? To fight for the backup spot? Would that be crazy? I'm tempted. Six foot four, big boy, four and a half star reflexes, athletic. I wouldn't mind making a little competition for the goaltending spot instead of having to call up a 80 overall or whatever. Uh, let's go... Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. exactly what he's asking for. Two years, 1.2. Even 1.25. Exactly what you're asking for. And even extra 50k, get yourself something nice. 
It's a good safety option. Yeah. All right, so we did more than I thought we would do in the free agency here. Some crazy RFAs were available. Yeah, Adam Fox. No one's even interested in him right now. I wonder, does the man change for different years? I'm sure it does. Yeah. He wants seven years, 18.4, though. Okay. We can, adv yeah, we can advance now. Let's advance a few days and see what happens. Uh, July 1st, we've done that. Oh, we could check staff free agency. Last thing, hire staff. Check staff free agency quickly. Any scouts are out there. Who's this guy? Matsumoto. Corbin Matsumoto. How's our uh, scouting, how's our coaching staff again? Do we need anything? Uh, yeah, we're okay. We're out for all the A's. We could use, uh, oh, there's Crosby. Yeah, we could use an AHL assistant coach, maybe. AHL assistant coach we could use in here. With good teaching. A plus with D... Yeah, let's go for this guy. Whoever this is. Votek Vokun. Let's do it. Make sure the game doesn't glitch or anything. I'll give you uh, 750. You might really have that vision of very different nationalities littered throughout the lineup coming true this year. Yeah, finally. We had that vision for a little bit. We had a little you know, German sprinkled it and all that. By the way, Luke Cunning, goodbye. I guess Luke cunning has gone. Uh, Marcus Breland pushed him out. So we're not going to look at Cunning in free agency. He's been a legend. We've enjoyed having him. No dog, he's going to be sad. But not going to work for us. All right, let's advance and see what these guys have to say. All right, Vokun, the store says, tell me your staff chemistry is excellent. Welcome. Here we go, we should get answers starting today. Sharon Govich goes to the Devils. All right, let's, I, I, want, I wonder what he signed for. Sharon Govich goes to the Devils. We'll pause there and look for a different option. Too bad. Uh, I don't know why this is the message that we get though. I was quite clear on how long of a contract I wanted. You wanted two years, I gave you two years. Brindamore's on board for third goalie. Breland's on board, let's go. And Datsuk has rejected the offer. All right, so you know what? We were already uh, second-guessing Datsuk right away, so it works out that we didn't sign Datsuk. Now we're, now we're in shambles, after Doggy was in shambles. So if one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. We don't need him. Uh, I want to see what he signed for. If he signed for like 5.65, I'll be upset. Uh, Devils... 5.865. I was thinking in my mind maybe we go 5.75, but I didn't want to go to 6. And you know what? Yeah, we, we offered him two years. He signed for two years. He goes back to the team that, that, that drafted him, correct? Yeah, he goes back to the team that drafted him. It's a good storyline. He gets an extra 365k. We could have paid it. I didn't really want to. And it doesn't work out in the end. It's all right. All right, back to the UFA forwards who can play third line. Let's think about it here. Uh, Erickson Eck, Ross Colton. I prefer not to go for a centerman. Bemstrom, I think, is overrated. Looking for guys who are uh, who are listed as third line forwards, by the way. Kubalik, maybe we convince him to take two years as a Czech player. He can't play with Yan uh, Yanik. 50-point guy. He's been in Calgary for a few years now. Has the all-alone X-factor. Then it drops down to 83 overalls after that. So I'd say let's try it. He has no people... No teams are interested in him. So what if I give you two years... Essentially the same offer I was giving to Sharon Govich, but you're one overall higher. I'll give you two years at... You wanted four years, so I'll give you more than you're asking for. Two years, 5.5. Same deal as I was offering to Sharon Govich. Let's see what Kubelik says to that. And we'll go from there. Okay? Two years, 5.5 in Kubelik. Advance another couple days. Dominic, what do you say? Marchant and Busenius for Bushnevich and Sisi. Wow, that's a, quite an offer from the Blues. What do you say? Nothing. One more day for Kubalik. All right. I was extremely happy to accept your offer. Your cash offer was most generous. Really was quite easy to make my mind up about your offer. Dominic Kubalik, welcome to San Francisco. And I think that's just about it for free agency. I'm super happy that we got Breland. Low-key, my happiest part, of my the part of the episode I'm most excited about. Coaching staff is good. I didn't... I checked the coaches, but I didn't check the scouts. Ah. Two of the three targets, yes. But we have everyone at least B-, minus, so at least there's that. Yeah, okay, forget it. The scouts. Oh, yeah, try to resign the RFA is good. 
Good call. Good call there, Gen Z. The RFA. So, Svozel, can you take a realistic offer now? There you go. Thank you. I'll give you two years. I was offering him 1.2, wasn't I? I'll give you two years at 1 million. Just for your disrespect, I'll have to move it down a little bit, but no hard feelings. Uh, one year, 800k on Lucic. And one year, 800k on Sereda. There we go. Main roster, goalies. Mikola's up to an 88. Uh, and we also, we could look at extension on Mikola. What does Mikola want as of today for an extension? Probably something crazy, right? Mikola would want... Ah, uh, 9.775. Not ridiculous, but it's still too high for my likings. He's an RFA, so we're not going to force a deal right now. Greaves would want 1.1. Yeah, we can wait on those guys. Okay, last thing we got to do is randomize the draft. Let's check it out here. You'll just have to trust me as you can't see it when it's the live stream. 1 to 20 will be low. By the way, remember, this was a medium, medium draft. Surprising for what we just had. So remember, 1 to 20 is low. 21 to 79 is medium. 80 to 100 is high. Random number 1 to 100. All right. So for the draft class quality, we will have medium 71. 71 on the draft class, it remains medium. Generated prospect quality, we get 31, so medium again. If we get too many years of medium, medium, I'll spice things up with like 1 to 30 is low instead of 1 to 20 and 70 to 100 is high. But I think the medium, medium is what you should get the majority of the time. So I'm perfectly fine with another medium, medium draft. This last draft was a, like a lower medium, medium anyways. So... There you go. All right, let's sim to next season at this point, I believe. Nothing left to do. Uh, Sposal's on board. There you go. Thank you. Couturier wants to be... Uh, I've spent some... <laughs> I've spent some time mulling over your qualifying offer. I am willing to devote another year of my career to this franchise. I am very happy to be back. Thanks, Skylar. Same thing, thing for Sereda. <laughs> these guys. All right. I'm waiting for the high, high draft. It's one of these days. I don't think we've ever had one. High, medium, or medium, high is the most we've ever had. I've never... I don't think we've ever had high, high. The Bruins want to send us Gerard. Very happy pack, period. End of story. Not like last time when it was the end of story with the two-way offer. The disrespect we had to face. Oh my goodness, the amount of offers we're getting here. Oh my goodness. Take all these guys off. Even Christian Knights might make the team. Who knows? Emelyn. We'll have a lot of teams that are, that are a lot of players fighting for it. So actually, it works out that uh, that Cunning didn't uh, come back. There wouldn't have been enough room for him. There could still be cuts to make with some excess value. And the offers just keep on coming. Let me take a sip of water here. Silly if a prospect was offered to us there. But we'll see when we look at the trade blocks. That should be it for the trade. All right, that's it for the trade offers. All right, so now what we want to see is what kind of growth do we get this offseason and what might our lines look like? Every year we need to make sure to get people who are willing to devote a year of their career. Yes, that's exactly it. Oh, yes, we have to sign Ericsson. That's it. That was the last thing we had to do. Yes. Let's do that before anything. He'll and that the good thing about prospects is that they sign right away. Ah, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers! Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. There's an 82 overall. Let's go. All right, let's get him on board. Been a dream of mine to join the team. Welcome. What's the mix of combined cap hit you're willing to devote to a goaltending tandem? Oof. Probably not more than like, probably eight millions the max for a tandem. Ideally, like closer to five. All right, here we go. Let's see the lineup for year number seven. Let's do it. Fiala, 89. Perfetti stays at a 91. Good. Breland's up to an 80. <laughs> McIntyre, 90. Uh, Rubric, 85. Good. All right, a little bit of growth there. Hudson, 90. Uh, everything else about the same. And we, like we said, uh, and Lysel's a healthy scratch. What? But at least he stays at an 85. And uh, Erickson, 82. Great. Heading into year number seven. Love it. All right. Let's make some roster moves now. Like Suzuki up here. Hold on a second. 
So hold on, forwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Huh. Suzuki's going to go down. Uh, maybe Be Beck gets traded. Maybe. We'll see in a moment. Haikila's still a 78. Emlyn's still a 78. Knight's still a 76. Yeah, there's more trades to be made. Uh, defense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sposal's number 7. Erickson comes up. And for goaltending, 89, 81, and Brindamore's an 83. Love it. He'll come up. Eminen, Jaredev, Galvis. I want Galvis to play more. I, I'd probably have Eminen get traded at this point. 22. He's high starter, but he's 22. Hard to say. All right, you still have more cuts to make. Let's check it out now. The lineup would actually look something like... Um... Um, this is it. Does Galvis have low potential? I'll check it out. Like this, Breland's gonna actually be a full timer with those stats. Yannick can be the scratch, and if Anasev will go there probably. Yeah. So the lineup probably looks like exactly like this. Actually, it probably looks exactly like this. We could, in theory, swap McIntyre and Perfetti. But aside from that, it would probably look exactly like this. Yep. On defense, Erickson. He's at an 82 now. Top 60. Does he play second pair or third pair? Yeah, decent chemistry. Cider and Hudson only get the plus one, unfortunately. So our two choices are... Do we go Ramirez, Romanov, Erickson, and fill in the blank? Or do we go... Something like Ramirez, Palika, and Erickson Romanov. And wait for Erickson to grow and he swaps places with Palika next season type of thing. That's definitely a question for us. Oh, Perfetti can't be with Rubrik. So yeah, McIntyre does need to stay there. Thank you, Cheating Neil. In goaltending, of course, it's Mikola. Russell Brendamore up to an 83. He's listed as a starter, so he'll he'll be battling with Greaves. Yannick, 13th forward. Svozil, 7th D. And in the AHL, Haikila, depth, I don't know. I think he probably gets traded. Emelin, I wanted to make him work as well. Former first round picks. These Both these guys, former first round picks. We took them at 16 and 19. We traded for two firsts. And they're turning into busts a little bit. Skyler Lucic, we love his shooting. Ramirez is left. Uh, Busenius, we have him in the system. That's good. Even Knight, 2276, second round pick. All the 2025 picks, right? I all the 2025 picks falling apart. On defense, we don't have anyone aside from Marchant. I know they're not growing. I don't want to. I don't want to trade all three or four of them. But Galvis is medium backup. At 21.67. Eminen is 22.73. It's more that I, I need Jared up to be the starter. That's why I want to move Eminen. I want to trade Eminen because I want Jared up to be starting. If they're not 79, at least by 23, they're busts. I'd say maybe we give them one more year. Trade value at 23 won't be that much of a drop. Maybe we give them one more year. <sighs> then by then, maybe Panarin's gone. I don't know. Maybe Lindholm's gone. More spots will be available. Let's not rush a decision just yet, where by next year we need depth. Let's not rush a decision just yet. I love Marcus Breland so much. This, <laughs> this guy is incredible. I hope he becomes a legend. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to make, I'm going to change all the AHL lines off screen. Do not worry about that. And then you'll see them for the start of next episode. I always want, I want to see some of these places. Are there any gems like Stefan Markstrom who have crazy generated player faces? Uh, and by the way, Panarin's still an 88, so that's good. But he'll, I'm sure he'll start to drop off with his top 9 potential. And 4.5 shooting, come on now. Uh, so yeah, we definitely want to see um, Breland. He could play power play, maybe, huh? Breland, please tell me you look incredible. Breland, let's see what you got. Uh, okay, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy for Breland. Looks normal enough. 
All right, normal guy. Normal guy, Marcus Breland. No silver afro or uh, handlebar mustache. Got three preseason. Maybe we put Haikiel and Emelin fourth line with Breland. Maybe in the preseason. We could do that. We could do that, Hobbsy. We looked at Eric's in the last episode, I think. I don't think he has anything special. Or is the episode before? I think he's also a normal guy. Yeah, also a normal guy. There you go. We drafted him second overall, so we have high expectations for him. This was our first time in a while that we didn't have like a top 10 pick in the draft. Uh, okay, and in the AHL... Um, they could. They could. Maybe a final save gets bumped. Maybe Beck gets bumped. Let's get give Brian the, the, the Silva stash. <laughs> Oops, again, wrong button. Anything special here? No. I'm just looking at some of these guys. Would any of these guys look so cool that they make their case to stay on this team? Get Marner and play him on defense. <laughs> Mika Haikila. Takes a long time to load, I find. Haikila. Oh, wow, I did not know. Mika Haikila, African American. Well, actually, well, no, he's from Finn. So, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I, I, I think it would just be to say that he's a black player. So, I love the haircut as well. N rare to see from a Scandinavian country. Love it. So, that's maybe a reason to keep Mika Haikila. Not to say that it. Uh, it hits quotas or anything. I'm just saying to save for cool storylines. Uh, Busenius. Busenius. Oh, yeah, I love Breland. I'm so excited for Breland. <laughs> cool haircut here. Rare combo for the light hair, dark skin as well. This is cool. This guy looks cool. Like the, like, uh, it looks like Quix Quicksilver. Let's call him... Uh, Busenius can be Quicksilver. Busenius, don't forget the guy that we just got from the Devil's Deal. Skyler Lucic. Excited to dedicate another year of his career to the franchise. Also, also a black player. Uh, wrong place. Skyler Lucic. And last would be uh, Knights. I just want to see Knights. Felt about Duheim. So yeah, uh, I guess now I understand. I well, I don't want to jump the gun here. Maybe uh, Breland falls apart. But I'm saying I'm very excited. Another one. Wow. I love to see so many generated dark skin players. Be not not just in general, but from these countries as well. It's it creates so many different storylines. Of I was the only one. It was uh, I was. Um, who am I trying to think of? Like, um... What's his name on the Kings, that prospect? Is it Iban? No. It's, uh... Bioko... What's his last name? I forget. Something with an I. Anyways, just the storyline of I was the only guy... No, not Byfield. Not Byfield. No, no, no. I'm say um... I'm saying, um... Bioko. Isn't he on the Kings? And it was just the storyline of I was the only guy in my team. I fought through adversity... Imama, is that his name? Imama? I like that storyline. Hopefully it creates... Uh... Yes, Imama, you got it. Exactly, Imama. He's on the Sens AHL team now, gotcha. It creates a storyline of hopefully he can fight for his spot in the NHL as he fought for his spot wherever he played. In uh, a country where it was mostly you know white, Scandinavian, uh, light-skinned players, as is most of the population. Anyways, I digress before I get into a uh, sociological discussion. Uh, again, last thing we could think about moving into next episode might be extensions. We, we spoke about the possibility of Otto Stenberg. Uh, he would, for one year it would cost more, but he'd be an RFA. Two years would be cheapest, but he would be a UFA after it. Does Owen Beck stick? Does Emlyn come up and become fourth line center instead of Owen Beck? I don't know. Beck has proven himself. Haikila, same story for him. Um, any change to Mikola and what he wants? Uh, okay, this is more reasonable now. We could go long term, like six by seven or something on Haikila. On Mikola, excuse me. Sociology 782 on Professor Data. Yes. <laughs> so we could definitely look at extending Mikola. 
Even though he's an RFA, we could do it in the offseason. We could think about it now. If the number is right, the number is right. Uh, anyone still in free agency as we wrap up this episode? Uh, 85 overall, Siliev. He's still out here. Anton Siliev. Eighth overall pick of the Flames. Now in the Sens organization. 44 points as a defenseman last season. Wouldn't really make sense for us, but he would want... Uh, he would go one year with 3.3. We have 6.98. Mario Ferraro is still available. No, we did not draft Eminen. I believe we signed him. Jaden Schwartz out there. Okay. Um, uh, then the trade blocks, I suppose. And that'll be it. I think that'll be it after we look at the trade blocks. Long before he has the best in the season and asks for what... Yeah, right. May as well lock him down before anything might change. So, looking at... Just quickly going through our trade value on the team. Here's our trade value... As a franchise, if anyone, if you want to think about any potential trades, here's our trade value for what we would have. In the draft coming up, we have a first, a second, a third, two fourths, and a fifth. In the year after that, we have all our picks. I correct? Yeah, we do. So we can definitely think about trading. Uh, yeah, we could, Joe, about Eamon, and we could think about that. Players on the blocks now, sorting by overall. So here we are. We see Novak and Provorov on expiring deals in Anaheim. Arizona has Shea Theodore on the block. Schmaltz, Moser, White Cloud. Boston has some prospects. Savoie on the block in Buffalo. Do we save Matthew Savoie? Uh, Blomdahl. This guy's also on the block. Essa Blomdahl. Sniper. What's his shooting? Three-star shooting. Uh, Calgary. Siliev on the block. They want to... Maybe we trade for Huberdo to free up their money to sign Siliev. So he's not in the Senators organization. Why does it say Senators? Has he ever even played for the Senators? Not even. So that's a crazy glitch. That he's <laughs> so Steos is not the guy who has to get it done there. Uh, it's Conroy. Don't worry about it, Hobbsy. But Huberdo, do we take him next season for fun if we have money? But obviously we can't do it right now. Ten point five million. Uh, Ruchin, Taylor Ruchin, on the block here with the Hurricanes. Ulanov as well. Ulanov, Ulanov. Two names. Chicago, Verhage, and, Ver and Reinhardt. Always on the block, no matter where they go. <laughs> Colorado has this guy. Rathji, who we just got drafted. Columbus, Wierenski, Matheson, Jenning, Dallas, Haig, Detroit. Uh, some prospects. Tur Turikov, Sergei Turikov. Could be interesting. Edmonton, no. Florida, Ovechkin went to Florida, and he's already on the block, down to an 84 overall. So let's definitely keep Ovechkin in mind. We'll keep close tabs on him. Los Angeles, Skinner signed with LA, one year, 4.5. We needed a third line forward in the end. That's true. We could have gone Chef Jeff instead of Kubalik, but Kubalik offers way more flexibility. Tara Vinen also on the block. So we think about, yeah, we'll think about Jeff and, uh, we'll think about Jeff and Ovi at the, at the deadline, perhaps, both on one-year deals. Not much in mini. This guy Erickson, per, per Erickson. That's true. They, they, the guy that just drafted and, and that was a 72 overall or whatever. He's already on the block. Who's this guy? Salik? Mat, Mate Salik? Salak? Moses? These are tough names. All on the block here in Montreal. Yeah, over the deadline, even if it's a four, for fourth line in power play, if, he's, um, if they're on a losing team especially. Last three years compared... Oh, yeah, the Skinner contract. It's still tough at $9 million, but he's definitely been uh, pulling his weight a lot more than he had been. Not much sure. Denisenko. Sima. We thought about Simar from uh, the Senators before. Philadelphia, nobody. Penguins, nobody. Sharks, Anderson, Ekblad, etc. Um, not sure. <laughs> Hobbsy. Erickson, uh, that's true, the, you can't see it on the screen. It says that, er, uh, Hobbs said Erickson will get an offer sheet from the Canadians in a few years. I'm sorry, from the, from the Hurricanes being on the Canadians in a few years. Bushnevich, Slavin, Chikrin, all on the block here in St. Louis. Tampa Bay, some prospects. The top six, we need our top six sniper instead of fourth line minutes. Yeah. Colton, Hannafin. So it's good that he's getting his ice time. Vancouver, this guy, uh, sorry, Dubo, Jean Dubo, grinder, with medium top six potential, 20 years old, Jean Dubo. Yeah, hasn't paid off well for them with Kotkaniemi, though. I don't mean to be a hater. I don't mean to be a hater. It's, 
yes, Kakanyemi signed the offer sheet, but the Canadians had the opportunity to match it. They didn't. He moved on. He had to do what's best for him. I don't, I don't have much ill will for Kakanyemi. Maybe there's some hard feelings a bit, but not that much. And I gotta say, from an honest perspective, what a disaster that has been for the Hurricanes. He was looking great at the start of the year, but in the second half, whoa. You gotta hope that he picks it back up in the playoffs or next season or something. Anyways, Bobby Brink is an expiring deal here in Vegas. Aside from that, Donato and Stevenson bunting on two-year deals. Um, Semin, another Semin in Washington. What did the Canes get in return for the offer sheet? A first and a third, correct? Then they flipped it with a, a, the first with the second for Dvorak. So essentially Dvorak. Velarde. JT Miller signed here. Went down to an 83 overall. Obi Kubel could be a 13th forward. Where was he? Here. Got a good return. The issue was flipping... Exactly. The return was good. The issue was flipping the return for Dvorak. Not one of Bergevin's better moves. Not Dvorak, but the price for Dvorak. And I'm a big Bergevin fan. I'm not afraid to say it. A lot of what Bergevin did was great. So much of what he did... I, no, well, the majority of the moves he made were moves that I approved of at the time and approve of with context. Like Anderson for Domi, in context, I approve. Do I like Josh Anderson today in his contract? No. So that's the thing. At the time, it made sense. What he, I don't think... There weren't many moves that, at the time, you said, this is going to be a disaster. Like, Drew for Sergachev, it was 50-50, but you definitely could have seen the disaster. So the Sergachev deal... Uh, when I'm thinking about the negatives of Ber Bergevin's tenure, the, the, the Sergachev deal... Uh, probably the Gallagher contract, the Anderson contract in the end, right? The, the, the Dvorak deal. After the cup final, he did some bad moves. Yeah, in the end, yeah. In the last year, I'll admit for sure. But when it came to the, you know, Dano and the pick that became Romanov for Fleischmann and Weiss. Uh, you know, the depth players who became, who had great value in the end. I'm not going to go through all the history of Bergeron now, but just so many deals from Bergeron that worked out. His last year wasn't so hot, but he got the team to the Stanley Cup final, and the team um, performed. Say what you will about how they made the playoffs with the COVID whatever, but they made the Stanley Cup final fair and square. Making the playoffs was lucky, but they made the Stanley Cup final fair and square. Notice the difference of what I, of what I said. I'll stop there. There's a ton I can say about the Canadians. It's a subject I have obviously know a lot about being a Canadians fan. Just... All that to say, I loved Bergevin. I was a big supporter of him. But at the same time, I'm also supportive of It Was Time to Move On, and I love Kent Hughes too. I think both things can be true. So there are the trade blocks. There are the lines. There are the contracts. I think that just about touches on everything we need to touch upon. Anything interesting for the draft class nationalities? Anything to stand out? Ooh, okay. Okay, interesting. So there is a Slovakian player number one. Potentially a Hungarian player number six. Then Finn, Swede, uh, Estonian, German. Where are you from? Uh, Montreal. I'm from Montreal, Alaska. Um, North. Oh, my. Uh, North, Gene Hills in the North, North Shore. I haven't watched a game in years now. I just love hockey, no matter the team. Love it. I can say the same. I, the majority of the games I watch are the Canadians, but there's a large number of games that I watch, or at least there's parts of games that are not the Canadians. Oftentimes it's the Senators because they're on TSN 5, right? They're, they they show locally. <laughs> I'm close enough, I guess, to Ottawa that TSN thinks they can play them. But I see a lot... I, any game that's on Sportsnet or on Tivia or on RDS or on Hockey Night in Canada, whatever, I'll see those as well. I'm not just watching Canadians games. Oh, yeah, we're, get ready for the postseason. Playoff watch parties, whatever it is, breakdowns, podcast with Slim. <laughs> uh, whoa, an Italian! Khalil Funk! The most un-Italian name possible, Khalil Funk. There's an Italian here at 46th overall. And there's a Norwegian even. Woo, can't wait to see that. We'll get him scouted for sure. We've got to get the Funk. <laughs> Ponikarovsky, Ukrainian. We want the Funk. <laughs> All right, I'll end it off there, ladies and gentlemen. It was a fun off season. We made a lot of cuts. There are more cuts to make, I believe. So that's my biggest thing for this off season. And for the comments down here on YouTube or over on the Discord server... Who do you want to see experimented with in the preseason? And from that experimentation, what moves would you want to be made? 
Would you want to see any types of trades for, like, like essentially I'm talking about Lucic, Emelin, Haikila, Knights, um, Sereda, Pruka, um, Imanin. Those are the guys I'm talking about first and foremost. I'm also talking about maybe Axel Sandin Palika, but I'm pretty content. Maybe Owen Beck? But yeah, that's, the top nine is a lock. And the the top four defense... I don't know, the defense is pretty much locked as well, I would say. Don't Yeah, I'll fix the AHL lines as soon as the live stream ends. Don't worry about that. My second team was Boston when I was younger because of Bork, and my third team was Pittsburgh from Lemieux. Love a cheating heel. My second team's always been Colorado. Ever since... I've, I always loved the early 2000s Avalanche, but I especially loved them more when Jose Theodore got traded there, my favorite player. A horrible trade for David Abisher. But uh, the Avalanche have always been my second team. Um... Yeah, everyone's saying that we need the funk. Everyone wants the funk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end it off there. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next Thursday evening. Our next live stream will be on, what is it, on uh, April the 9th? Is that it? Next Tuesday? So it'll be the Expos off season. Yes, April 9th will be the Expos off season next Tuesday, live here on the channel, 7 p.m. Eastern. And next Thursday, at uh, April 11th, a week from tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern again, we will have the entirety of the 2029-30 season, episode number 22, for year number seven with the San Francisco Starfleet. Leave any and all your suggestions down here on YouTube or over in the Discord server. Leave a like if you haven't already for a little bit of good luck for the uh, year that was and the year that will be, the off-season that was, I should say, for some growth. Leave a like for good luck for the growth. Uh, no one unsigned who will sign. That's great. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already to be made aware of all of those uploads. Check out today's Vancouver Canucks 2030 postseason upload live. That was, um, it is now live. It was posted earlier today here on the YouTube channel. Check that out if you haven't already. And I'll leave you there. Ladies and gentlemen, stay safe with the snow if you're in Montreal. Everybody have yourselves a wonderful rest of your evening and soon the start of the weekend. Very much looking forward to it after the snow that we had to endure today. Yes, I'm looking forward to the Canucks comment, Joe. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. Much love. Thank you very much for the donations as well. It really does go a long way. We're, we're slowly saving up for the new the new laptop, uh, the honeymoon, all that. We're going to start saving up for everything, right? Good night, everybody. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the community. And I look forward to being back here again next week. Live long and prosper, and we'll talk soon.